engage. Wait, no Star Trek. No Star Trek. <laughs> no Star Trek. You can't start us that early. <laughs> we'll never get to anything. Uh, yeah, Johnny is here and he's not late. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 93, the show where everything's made up in the points. To- oh, sorry, wrong show. <laughs> Your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Welcome to the show, everybody. Happy Wednesday or Thursday, depending on where you're at. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. John, how you doing? I'm very, very tired. <laughs> you I, look a little I tired. Am, I am tired. Just sleep. Uh, having, having a two-year-old sometimes can be rough. So. I, have, I have a two and a six-year-old, yeah. so yes. I wasn't going to call you out on the looking tired, but, <laughs> but you look a little tired. I look tired. I feel tired. A little tired. bit worn. <laughs> I feel tired. And then, yeah, this past weekend, I moved my in-laws all by myself. Yeah. It was just one of these weeks, and my wife wanted to go work out at one of these, uh, like, um, paid infomercials. Like, Uh he he came to town. Uh And so it was like, all right, an hour-long workout. Let's go. Yeah, that's all it was. The day after I just moved my in-laws, I'm just like, are you kidding me? (laughs) All right, give me 15 more of those. No. (laughs) I'm paying you. That's great. Uh, welcome to the show, all of you as well. Uh, as always, let us know what you're drinking in the chat. We'll try to give some shout outs where possible. Uh, if you are new to the show, this is our once weekly live show. Uh, we do drink on the show, although we do try to keep it as family friendly as possible, both language wise and content wise. So yes. we try to be a show for everyone to be able to watch. Uh, so that being said, what are we drinking on the show today? Uh, we got a couple things. We have a exclusive beer for New Seasons, brewed by mm-hmm. Gigantic Brewing here in Oregon. Uh, it is a barrel aged Grand Cru. I believe Ooh. it's called uh, Four Hearts Beat as One. Interesting. Yes. Uh, I don't think that I've had a barrel aged crew before. I've had. I think. I. Th- I bet you have it. My the tap room. I've at least had one on draft. Uh, so I, I know I've had some crews before, but yeah. I, so I don't uh, remember a barrel aged one think, specifically. Yeah, it's, it's, apparently, this is exclusively only at New Seasons. Nice. So, very cool. Yeah. And you brought us the uh, the Tropic of Thunder. Tropic of Thunder from what, Stone. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> yeah. yep. I didn't know how many jokes I should do. And there's so many takes. I'm like, yeah, that just doesn't sound right. Yeah. yeah I, well, I'm just not. I'm, I can't do it. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Uh, and then I brought in a Crispin uh, Honey Crisp. It's a uh, uh, a fresh pressed American apple cider with wine yeast and honey. Ooh. Yeah. I'm actually I, cider sounds pretty good with this. It's pretty warm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's kind of a, a nice turn. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that they included the calories on the side of the bottle. Of this one. <laughs> it's yeah. per serving, and then it says this bottle is two servings. Three hundred and seventy. Oh. Yeah. Serving size one bottle. Oh, okay, yeah. that's actually not bad. Yeah, three hundred and seventy though. Yeah, I, I, I like the initiative, but I also really don't like. The yeah, initiative. I don't want to know. I, Trust I, me. I, <laughs> there are some I don't want to know. Uh, yeah, Goose <laughs> Island, you leave me the hell alone. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever post those. That's right. Even though they're owned by Budweiser and they're pushing that. Oh, please no. <laughs> Bizarro World, John's on time. <laughs> Uh, someone's drinking a rogue chocolate stout. Yeah, nice. uh, kratom tea. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> what? Uh, Black and tan by Youngling. Oh, nice. Uh, Prairie Artisan Ales, Imaginary Friends IPA. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Budweiser, unfortunately. Hey, see, it's, it's a drink. It's a drink. It's a drink. Uh, John, I have one that I didn't tell you about. You did. I do. What? Well, we have a couple of stories that we're leading with. Okay. And I figured it'd only be appropriate. Oh, God. I figured it would only be appropriate. Oh, God. Since you always bring me crap. <laughs> You're gonna... Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. White God. John, old buddy, old pal. <laughs> I came this close to bring it up. <laughs> Because I have two at home. I was like, oh, I'm going to bring these tonight. <laughs> John, old buddy, old pal. Oh. Right, so it's time for your comeuppance. Oh, my uh, God. Would you like the black cherry or do you prefer the, the ruby grapefruit? I'm gonna, let's just stick You're with gonna how it is. You're going to go ruby? Okay. Stick how it is. Um, I, I will go black cherry. You, want, you know what, though? Hang on. I have a surprise for Jeff. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. This is actually a good surprise. Okay. So okay. Uh, you actually hit uh, 100,000 a while ago. Yes. And we didn't get you. We didn't get you anything. We didn't do anything. So I got you something uh, 
proper brand new glassware. Oh. So this is what the cool beer drinkers use. And I got you two, so. Oh yeah. So we even have people on the show that like these glasses. Very nice. So I sanitize them and everything. Yes. So it's, it's not soap, it's sanitized. Yes. A, a proper tasting glass. Proper tasting glass. These are the Tecu glassware. They have these little lasered etched bottoms that keep it bubbly. And you'll see these constantly on my reviews. Yes, these are wonderful. Yes. Thank you, man. That is so cool. All right. Now we can pour white <laughs> Do, you, do we want to sully these with white? It doesn't cones? matter. Yeah, I I can't have the first thing I drink in these be white. Uh, like, why not? I can't. Oh, we can't. We, we can just we drink white claw out of the out of the can. I think that's way more appropriate. Yeah. I'll, although, yeah. I mean, if you have something. Uh, we've got. Uh, Woo! -hoo! That's right. a twenty. That it just it, it we'll, feels right holding that can. It does. We'll we'll do my plan. Okay. <laughs> What I love about these cans, these have had way worse in there. <laughs> is that they, they go perfect with all the Instagram filters. Three dislikes already. It's probably for the white claw. <laughs> it smells. You know, actually, that's this this one smells like a shandy, like um, or what is that? Um, God, that really famous shandy that everyone drinks around. Well, there's the half was... shandy, the the yeah. Whitmer shandy. Yeah, the with the yeah. That's actually not bad. No, it, it, smells, it smells nice. It smells like Crush. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sm smells pleasant. Looks like... <laughs> kind of like Zima. <laughs> yeah. Way, way better smell than just about any of the really offensive ones that you brought on the show. Yes. I think this is probably the least offensive not craft beer we've had. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's, let's give it a up. shot. Cheers, John. Cheers, Cheers to you all. I like it. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Hundred and although this is hundred and seventy calories. Hundred and seventy, yeah. Oh boy. We're we're in for it tonight. Yeah. Calorie wise. That's not bad. That's not bad. The there's, aftertaste is kind of weird. I was actually just gonna say the aftertaste on this one is almost non existent. Yeah. It's there's a included it's three pretty, grams of sugar. Yeah, it's pretty pleasant. Hmm. I swear if they get any alcoholic questions tonight, I'm going to flip out. <laughs> <sighs> well, yeah, that's strangely refreshing. It's not, yeah, it's not bad. Now, this, it's only 5%, so it's right. nothing. This is basically Budweiser. Yeah. But really low-cal, yeah. Budweiser, Bud Light uh, type S type thing. Exactly. John, you want to hold that up to the camera and show them just how... Show them just just how... <laughs> just what it looks like. Except your face is in focus. I forgot I had face detection on. There we go. Now it's focusing on me. <laughs> Dang it, that's not going to work. <laughs> there we go. Well, oh. we tried. Well, we tried. <laughs> I look good. Yeah. It's stunning, actually. All um, right. Uh, our... There's a reason we brought the seltzer on the show, or I brought the seltzer on yes. the show. Um, thank you for not bringing the others, because that would have been an awkward <laughs> night. Uh Anyway, we have a, a couple of stories to start out with. Yeah, so we, we've actually talked about this company a few times recently. They've uh, sorry, released a uh, Imperial and a non-alcoholic, and then most recently a coffee version. Mm -hmm. Well, seltzer is becoming such a popular thing right now. I mean, apparently this is just crushing the beer market. I think it's selling really well. Yeah. It's not displacing anything, I don't know. No, I think it's just creating a whole new market. Yes. That's all it is. It's it's right in between that malt liquor, you yeah. know, Mike's Heart Lemonade type mm -hmm. thing and beer, and mm -hmm. this is a low calorie version of that. that right. I I'd, I'd place this squarely with a Mike's Heart Lemonade. Yeah. Or and this is like probably a hundred calories less. Yeah. You know. And and certainly well in front of the old English. Yeah. And and the the malt liquors that you find. Well, horrible, there, horrible yes. things. But one of the downsides a lot of people have talked about is only that it's five percent. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hurting a couple people. Well, there's a pretty famous beer company that has kind of got a solution for you. Yeah. Pabst Blue Ribbon, 8% seltzer wine. Woo woo, woo woo. And Imperial, the world's first Imperial mm -hmm. seltzer water. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be an 8% uh, seltzer and it only comes in one flavor. They're testing this in three states. 
Um, and I believe it only comes in, it was like a grapefruit or some kind of citrus. Lemon lime. I lemon think. lime, yeah. yeah. You know, but basically, yeah, lime, lemon lime. Yep. So a uh, seven up style right. type issue. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, this is, and it also only has one gram of sugar, where this has three grams of sugar. Ooh. Ooh. So there's no calorie count. If it on was Tic Tacs, it'd be sugar free. <laughs> well, yeah. Then they have stevia in it too. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's gonna have that big kind of stevia flavor. Yeah. And I can't stand a lot of artificial sweeteners. No. This this one I'm I'm actually. It's not horrible. No. I I would be curious to try the other flavors. Yeah. Oh, it's actually got ingredients on the side. Look at that. Uh, natural cane sugar. There's no other sugars in here. Alcohol brewed from cold or yeah. cold brewed sugar. And that's it. Yeah, there's no sucralose or sucrose or corn syrup or anything like that. It's just yeah. cane sugar. That's actually kind of surprising. And that, I think that's why I like it. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> now it's going to be <laughs> White Claw on craft computing. <laughs> so uh, someone's pointing out the, uh, the trim work on the side of the door there. That is on my list to address. There's actually no trim in this room, and there's no trim around the door. Uh, but uh, there will be shortly. Usually that's not on the camera. It hasn't been... I think it's been on the live show that we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, but during the, the one video that I shot in here, two videos that I've shot in here, it's not present. So, But uh, yeah, we're getting trimmed back up on the door. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It's part of the moving process. It's, yeah, it's, it's remodeling. Come that's on. Right. So... Uh, well, not to be outdone, there's a familiar name getting back into the, uh, the game, uh, and almost doing a, a doubling up of the, the They're Imperial just going Salsa. in all the way. All the, they, they saw what uh, Paps was doing and like, mm -hmm. we got this. We can do that. We can do this. We're way better at this crap yeah. than you are. <laughs> We've been doing this for years. Since at least 2010. Yeah. Uh, for Loco is back with a the highest ABV seltzer you could ever want 14% that's a triple yeah 14% seltzer water from Four Loco uh, with a hint of blue raz yeah oh, yes yeah the company's uh, lineup for right now is sour raz fruit punch and frost <laughs> what is frost I'm is assuming that, it's like a blueberry. Like, I, I was going to say, is that like a Powerade Blue? Yeah. Whatever those Mountain Frost. Mountain well, the, there's the Gatorade Frost. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm assuming it's like that. God, that Fruit Punch is going to be tremendously bad. Horrible. Uh, if it says Fruit Punch, it's, it's bad in, in alcohol. Yeah. It's just not good. Um, I can't wait for these to come. But uh, <laughs> subtitled, quote, The Strongest Seltzer in the Universe. Four Loco actually claim, uh, could actually claim that title. Uh, <laughs> seltzer market leaders truly in white cloth strengths hover around the 5%. Yes. Indeed. And they actually mentioned uh, Paps. Yep. Yep, Paps is unveiling the 8% hard seltzer uh, next week in four states. Uh, four Loco would be the most over the top in the hard seltzer market. In the <laughs> That is turning into quite the phenomenon. Um, boy, I'm not looking forward to the Paps, and I'm definitely... Not oh, looking forward to the Oh, you logo. know I'm so good. I know try you're going to bring some. I'm totally going to do it. I know you're going to bring some. <laughs> if they sell it here. And I hate you for it. <laughs> hey, you brought the White Claw. It might be good. You brought this on yourself. Hey, if this is what I bring to myself, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I, could, I could drink this. Better than the Copper Reserve. Uh, you know, I don't know. There, there's your video. I still have one. Yeah, there's you a video. <laughs> Although, so this is, so the, the standard one, this is a quite larger one. I did think of a video to do with these. So yeah. the standard one is the eight ounces. Yes. And that claim is a hundred calories. Mm -hmm. Does it taste better than the 90 95, calorie, the 90 calorie, the Michelob, the Michelob light or whatever? Yeah. What tastes better than that? No. Yeah. They're basically the same. Oh, I think that this, the Michelob is like four seven. Yeah. So you're still right in the same percentage. Yeah. You wouldn't tell. So. 
Uh, so a, a friend of mine said, his, uh, back when Four Loco was Four Loco. Yeah. Um, back before <laughs> people died. <laughs> yeah, before people died of, of heart attacks. Uh, he and his wife used to have Ocho Loco nights, so they'd have two of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Back when it was like 14% and Red Bull. Yeah, well, that, that would be like gaming night. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I can say I've never, I've never, no, no, that's not true. I've I've had one of the original four logos. Yeah, I've had one. I've had one. I've had one. Um, and I think I've had one of the the post-release where it was 8%, no caffeine, and, and stripped down on, on all the other stuff. Um, but. Uh, Wasn't that the one Steve brought? <laughs> Did Steve bring four? No, logos? he brought a. Uh, what was that? It was some kind of fruit punch. It was something from Miller. I oh, thought. I thought it was four loco. Uh, no, it wasn't four loco. I do remember that. Oh, okay. Uh, Crispy says he was twenty one when four loco came out. I'm I'm surprised you made it that long, my friend. <laughs> and you're still alive? Mm-hmm. Jeez, I thought you would have taken it and gone at twenty five. That's right. We're 21 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else we got, John? Uh, well, we got um, some some famous... By the way, beer news is going to run a little bit long longer. tonight. There's a little bit more beer news than normal and a little bit slower tech week. So yeah. this is going to be like a 30-minute beer news yeah. week. Sorry. So, <laughs> you, you can watch anyway. You'll you be won't. fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. We'll put a timestamp for everyone to know when the tech stuff starts yeah. after we post Oh, it. don't worry. The first two comments are usually, tech news starts at 29 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, if you would like some free rent in your life, mm -hmm. you might be able to get free rent, but you might have to drink this kind of crappy beer. <laughs> yeah. Some people like it. But Keystone will pay your rent for one year to a lucky 13 people. Yep. Uh, up to $1,000 per yes. month. Uh, so it is uh, uh, payable for $12,000 or $1,000 per month yeah. to reimburse you for your rent. Um, however, there are some stipulations on the, uh, <laughs> on the prize winners. Uh, you can enter. Uh, there's 13 first place prizes of $12,000 uh, in the form of a check. Uh, you can enter at Keystone Beer Contest 2019. You must be 21 years uh, or older to enter. Participants can submit one entry per day. There will also be 166 first prizes, and this is a doozy of a prize pack, let me tell you. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, 166 first prize pies, first prizes. First place prize. First place prize comes in the form of the Adulting Transition Pack, <laughs> uh, which includes an inflatable chair, a shower curtain, a Hawaiian shirt, and a chandelier made from Keystone light cans. Oh. Although, that would be interesting. The chandelier would be kind of fun. <laughs> Why not start your adulting right? I know that's like like I love it. They call it the adulting pack. It's the adulting starter pack or adulting transition. Yeah, pack. transition pack because that's how adults live. Uh, drawing will take place September thirtieth. Uh, the company will select five grand prize winners and eleven first prize winner from all eligible entries in the national pool. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, then... and you get a drink Keystone for yeah. a year. Yeah, exactly what I want. I mean, $1,000 per month. I wonder if they do... Natty Light. Natty Light. It was Light. a Natty. It's a Natty. Natty. Okay. Yep. Is Steve watching or someone just... No, someone up? just said Natty Light and I went, he brought Natty. That's what he brought. <laughs> That's right. That's what he brought. I remember that. That is a little... Yeah, it's a 19-ounce can. Just for you. Yes. You suck. This isn't that bad, actually. This is... No, it... It's very drinkable. Yours is a way more carbonated, though, than mine. Yeah. That's odd. You want to try mine? Actually, yeah. Switch up. Yours got a little tartness to it. Mm-hmm. Yours has... Your, yours, the taste does linger a little bit longer. Yeah. M mine, it's there, and then it just goes. They kind of just... I think yours is stronger, has an mm -hmm. initial stronger taste, though. Yes. That's interesting. I will say that. Yeah. Yeah, but not bad. No. Hot summer day, ice cold. Yeah, and Heck if, yeah. If, if this was in an ice chest at mm -hmm. a barbecue and it was this or Budweiser, I'd probably actually get this. I'm totally taking this. Yeah, I would probably take this over a Budweiser. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, I would. Uh, no questions. Yeah, I would probably feel more refreshed. Um, wouldn't have that stink of Budweiser, you yeah. know, type of a thing. Especially after it warms up eight degrees in the yes, sun. Yes, that too. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see this. I, it's not going to taste nearly as good at 45 degrees as it does at like 37. No, but I could probably put this in ice yeah. and then still be like, oh, I, I taste a little watered down flavor and Absolutely. it'd be fine. Yeah. So. I, I drink seltzer water straight anyway. Yeah. And so just pour it over ice and yeah. off it oh, go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there's no transition for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there are some uh, monks over in England who actually joined a pretty unique club, but the way they did it was they traded some cows mm -hmm. in and they bought some brewing equipment instead because apparently the dairy industry <laughs> doesn't really pay out that well for no. monks. But the beer industry is booming. Yes. So these Trappist monks over in England uh, actually uh, tra literally traded in their cows. <laughs> <laughs> they used to be a dairy um, production mo monastery. That's the mm -hmm. word I was looking for. And uh, so they traded in the cows and they bought a system. What was this? A couple years ago? F uh, oh, I spent five years setting this state of the bre uh, art brewery up that can do uh, 300,000 bottles a year. Uh, and they're producing, I believe right now, it's only a single beer. But this particular beer uh, has gotten, what was it called, the certificate? Uh, da -da -da -da, must refund, and I, I think people. Oh, gosh. I should have remembered what the Trappist monster died six years ago. Pardon me for looking this up. Yeah. And I'm chatting, so. Yeah, <laughs> this makes it even worse. Depends on the box. Such a much bigger article. Anyways, so, uh, Bless Company or Brotherly Blue. Bro. Anyways, so they, uh, received this, uh, award by the Trappist Monk, um, Catholic Church that they are the only 12th in the world, in the history, mm -hmm. to ever receive this for their beer. Um, they only distribute it in England in their little, I don't remember what stout, it said near Colville. Uh, so it's uh, Mount St. Bernard Abbey. This is great video right now with both of us. Yeah. Just kind of like this. Hold on. We'll be with you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this is what uh, tech support looks like all the time. Be right there. Hang on. Why does this exist? Uh, why does this exist, though? Did someone just wonder what alcohol in the crow tastes like or what? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yes. Pretty much. Uh, it's quality. <laughs> Is this even an article? It's an article. It I, is an article. It's this, more of a story. Yeah, I was going to say, is this the article I posted? Yes, it is the article you posted. Maybe I was looking for just a nice picture at the top. Yeah. Anyway, if anyway. you are, if th there is an entire story. There is an are, entire story. It's actually a pretty interesting story. If you mm -hmm. like the whole uh, Monk Monastery, if you like kind of a bit of beer history, and if you are one of our UK followers and you could find this beer, mm -hmm. we would love to get a, handle, get a hold of it and try to try it. Yes. Um, Apparently, it's supposed to be really fantastic because it's blessed by the Catholic Church and uh, brewed traditionally. So, um, there was another article. Uh, we talked about this a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, your old studio. You and I actually talked about it, and I brought the beer on, too. Yes. But um, Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Uh, so, Guns and Roses had a legal battle with uh, Oscar Blues with their Guns and Rosé beer. And it finally, it's uh, settled. Yep. Guns N' Roses finally settled, or AKA they reached an agreement. Reached in an principle. agreement, yeah, in principle, and dropped the suit. Yep. Um, nothing was been said about it or what they're getting, but it's being dropped, and that's they, and um, Oscar Blues will sell it to the 2020. Uh, I, I believe it was, yeah, March of 2020. So Oscar Blue, uh, uh, Oscar Blue will stop selling this beer. Uh, uh, March of 2020. Yep. So, um, they probably reached a short term licensing deal and said you can sell off the rest of your stock with the same name, but once it's gone, it's gone and don't yeah. ever brew it again. Don't ever well, design yeah, it again. Well, yeah, the big suit was more of that they had the logo on t shirts, stickers, and other things. It wasn't just the right. beer because the beer was being brewed at the tap room uh, and sold there, but only on draft right. for a while. And they didn't care, but it's the fact that. 
there's all this other merchandise that's so similar. Right. And that's where, I guess, it wasn't even just Axel. Axel, Slash, and Duffy, whatever, the three the three major yeah. living ones, um, or ones that are still technically in the band, whatever. Or still had, technically alive. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, had had fault with. Yeah. So I think if it was just the, the beer, I don't think they would probably even care. Yeah. But it was more the merch. Yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Uh, there's no great transition into this one either, so let's just do it. But it's, it's exciting. It's Bourbon County Stat Time. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Goose Island unveils their 2019 Bourbon County Stout lineup. Uh, and it looks like a good lineup. It's a good lineup. Oh, it's, a it's a good, good lineup. lineup. So they are doing the exact same thing as last year, which last year was their largest lineup ever of eight. So they're doing another eight. This mm -hmm. includes the regular one. Yes. Uh, however, one very special thing that they're doing this year is actually they're doing a box flight. Yes. Uh, that is three years worth. You can get the 17, 18, and 19 of the regular uh, Bourbon County Stout mm -hmm. together all at once, uh, aged by them, which is really cool. Yep. Uh, and then the rest of the article, they go down and uh, explain a couple of the other ones. The other one I'm really excited for. Yeah, let, let me know what which one you want. Oh, I want the the double barrel. Yeah, double barrel uh, looks uh, uh, double barrel sounds looks, incredible. Yeah. So the double barrel is this is the first year ever being released to in a bottle. They've had it a few times at events and the taproom, but what it is is it's barrel aged in a 15 year Elijah Craig uh, for a year and then a or 12 year, 11 year, and then aged again in a 12 year Elijah Craig. So mm -hmm. double aged in two different Elijah Craig barrels, which we've had we've had a R Elijah Craig reserve. Yes. But imagine that twice as much. Yes. <laughs> oh, and, and that already tasted like. Just straight bourbon. Oh yeah, that was that was phenomenal. <laughs> that and they're saying so that this this tastes like bourbon. Yeah. Too. Um, the other thing is they're doing another reserve this year. Mm -hmm. they're, they're doing a rye reserve. Yes. That, I was ex I was excited for two mm -hmm. more than anything else. Obviously, the the two year barrel sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, the two that did catch my eye were the uh, the rye reserve, because um, I'm a huge fan of rye. Yeah. I I love rye. That one just sounded amazing. That and uh, the return of the true coffee. The coffee one sounded the, the, really... The, the, the Cafe de Ola. Yeah. Uh, so the, those coffee notes just really speak through in, in the bourbon series. Oh, Last yeah. year, they, they didn't have a coffee beer. No, they didn't. Uh, they had the coffee and barley wine uh, yeah. mix. And some people liked it, but you have to like barley wine to enjoy that one. Yeah. And, uh, and it didn't really do as well as they had hoped. So uh, they still have the wheat wine. Which I really you know, enjoyed. Right. Um, but uh, but they've gone back to doing a true coffee stout again. Yes. So so yeah, they're doing a coffee. Uh, they're going to be doing a cherry. Yeah. Uh, and they're bringing back the, the regular wheat wine. Yep. Uh, the proprietor. Proprietors. And then the proprietors this year is a really great... Usually uh, they've done different flavors. Mm -hmm. This year's is coconut, coa, cocoa, vanilla, and pecan. Yes. Which, that sounds amazing. Yes. Um, I have a bottle of the 2017 proprietors in the fridge. Really? I do. <laughs> I might have an 18. <laughs> that, that sounds like a video. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I, I do have a, a, a 2017 proprietors in the fridge. So. Oh, yeah. Yes. So so we know who we'll be talking to on our Discord channel or Jeff's Discord channel because he might be able to get us some of these. But we will also be getting a few. And, of these. and buddy, I got a PayPal. Account. Yeah, we got money. We well, will make this one. Yes. Happen. <laughs> uh, did they talk about the thirty-two core Threadripper yet? Great transition. What are oh, you kidding? You're just yeah. in time. That's right. We were just getting to it. Uh, so that does it for the beer news. On to the tech news. Normally we'd open another beer, but this was a 19 ounce. Yes. So. Hey, you're right on time. It was 30 minutes. 829. Look yeah. at that. It's like I've done this before. <laughs> 93 times, in fact. Okay. Not bad. No, it's, it's still not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Okay, now we can talk Threadripper. So, uh, 32 core Threadripper was allegedly seen in benchmarks this week. Now, uh, we reported a couple weeks ago that a 16 core yeah. with the uh, uh, codename Shark's Tooth had been spotted in user benchmarks. Um, 
And for some reason, my... Why is it always Tom's hardware doesn't want to load on, on... when I need to read it? It's not loading on my desktop for some reason. <laughs> no idea why. Anyway, uh, the official code name is Castle Peak for the 7 nanometer Threadripper chips. Uh, but uh, in user benchmarks, they are showing up as Shark's Tooth. Um, the really interesting thing, um, if I had notes to look at. <laughs> me, uh... Nope. Can I do it that way? Fire. Yeah, I was going to say trip fire. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah, not showing up in Chrome for some reason. No idea oh, why. Uh, there we go. Now I can read. Um, the really interesting thing is that user benchmark apparently is listing this um, as a... Where is it at? Uh, the, uh, the the boards are codenamed Whitehaven. Now Whitehaven was the code name for the original X399 platform. Uh, and so the speculation is just like the seven nanometer Rome Epic chips, these are going to be backwards compatible with X399 via firmware updates. Um, so if you invested in the platform, <laughs> like I did, um, <laughs> you can probably get a return on on being able to drop a third gen chip into a first gen board. Uh, and that is excellent, excellent news. Um, I'm certainly a buyer, yes. <laughs> if that's the case, um, especially because my 1900X is getting fairly long in the tooth. Um, I sounds did, like you need a shark tooth. I, I sounds like I need a shark tooth. Uh, I did some testing this week and a stock Ryzen 5 3600 beat it straight up slaughtered it in single core performance <laughs> and uh, and actually beat it straight up. Uh, not even stock speeds. Like, like he's beating my overclocked 1900X. Ouch. Or, yeah, 1900X straight up. Ouch. Without doing anything to it? Without, that's out of the box. 3,000 megahertz memory. Oh not God. even 3,600 megahertz memory. Oh, my God. Just gosh. stock speeds beating my Threadripper. Things of beauty. Yeah. So uh, that video is coming hopefully tomorrow or Friday. Uh, a lot of testing went into that one, so it took a couple days longer to do. But uh, yeah, Ryzen 5 3600 benchmark coming soon. Uh, anyway, uh, so supposedly backwards compatible with X399. Supposedly could also be launching an X599 chipset. And I feel they might do that and include PCIe 4.0 mm -hmm. if you want to make that upgrade. Yeah. If you want to leave it at PCI 3.0, you can use X399. Um, uh, so 32 cores, 64 threads did appear on Geekbench uh, with a single threaded score of 5,932 and a multi-threaded score of 93,344. Uh, comparing that to the Threadripper 2990WX, which is the current flagship Threadripper of 32 cores and 64 threads, uh, Castle Peak performed 4.72% higher in single threaded and 14.63% faster in multi-threaded workloads. Um, very, very exciting. Now, uh, AMD has been releasing products on the 7th when they release them. Yeah. On the 7th day uh, to kind of commemorate, hey, 7 nanometer. 7, 7, yeah. Uh, so... Because they did the 7, 7, 7. Right. So, so obviously, uh, uh, Navi and 3rd Gen... Or 2nd... Yeah, 3rd Gen Ryzen. <laughs> Ryzen 3000. Zen 2. Uh, launched on 7.7. Rome launched on August 7th. Radeon 7 launched all the way back in February on February 7th. Uh, there's some speculation that uh, Threadripper will, will be launching September, September 7th. I don't think it'll be September. From what I've heard from Fab Timings and uh, TSM, TSMC, uh, it's going to be actually closer to a November launch. But okay. November 7th, we may be seeing... Threadripper chips, but launch. still, that that'll be fine. I mean, that's that's Christmas time. People right. are going to be wanting to all Se those. September seventh, we're going to get the sixteen core Ryzen nine thirty nine fifty X. That's the launch date for that chip. Uh, so very very exciting times. Um, uh, I think the thirty nine fifty X is going to be a dominant chip at seven forty nine. But if you have been struggling with Intel Xeon offerings and, and, and workstation chip offerings and, and even high-end desktop offerings, I think Threadripper is going to dominate. I, I'm curious to see the price of Intel stuff at the end of the year. Yes, that's what I. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, we don't have any pricing information, but we do know that this 32-core chip was running at 3.6 gigahertz uh, base, base clock with 128 megabytes of L3 cache. Yeah. 
uh, which is uh, 600 megahertz higher on the base clock than the 2950X. Um, we don't know the boost clock, but we do know that the L3 cache on the 2950X was also 64 megabytes. Yeah. Um, so, whew. Interesting times. And actually, there's a typo in their thing. There should be the 2990X, not, not 20 the 2950. 50. Yep. 2950 is their 16 core, which is still a good chip, but it's only 16 core, which sounds weird to say. Right? I mean, literally, like, what, what, it, less than 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 8 core. Oh my God, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, we, yeah, we've talked about this on the show a couple of times um, that if you wanted 6 core three years ago, your options were to go high end desktop platform on X99 and buy a 6800K or a, and, and the highest core count available was either 8 or 10 core and they were $1,800. Um, a thousand dollars got you eight cores in, yeah. the, in the 6900K uh, or 6900X or whatever it was, um, and then the 6950X uh, i7 was uh, was ten cores and that was eighteen hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. um, and even still, Intel's playing that that core count game with with lower returns on IPC but higher returns in core count. So you end up with fairly similar performance overall on your PC. Mm. Uh, obviously, more cores is going to do more damage, but um, yeah, uh, E5 2670V2, $1,500. Um, I actually just bought one of those chips for 130 bucks. I have two of them over on my shelf right now. Yep. Um, wow. but yeah, so the E5 2670 on Ivy Bridge, which was the X79 platform, it was 10 cores on the Xeon side, $1,500. Yeah. Ouch. Yep. Now we're talking about having 32 cores for probably less than that. Yeah, I know. Oh, what, 12? I would say 13, 50, 1400 oh, bucks, yeah. maybe right in there. Yeah, still, the, <laughs> I mean, quadruple the, the amount. Right. For the, for 10 or 20% cheaper. Yep. Uh, ooh, we're sharing some, uh, some bottle pictures on the Discord. Nice. Spicy buckwheat ale. Yeah. Interesting. I, that's interesting. Uh, two de Grisau. Two yeah. de Grisau. Yeah. Uh, sorry, you guys at home can't see this. Yeah. Uh, okay, per, so that's the imaginary. Perry Arts and Ale, Imaginary yeah. Friends. And. That's a lager, a blueberry lager. Yeah. Interesting. Is that a T or an F? Is that a T or an F? I don't know. Because you can see the line. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so. Oh, we get a new patron? We did. We got, oh, yeah, before dawn. Before dawn. Welcome, you, to, sir. welcome to the Discord, buddy. Surf around. Enjoy. <laughs> Trust me, there is something for everyone there. Uh, there is a lot there. It is There's a lot going active, on. Um, area. Browse around. Everyone's super friendly. Yes. Uh, and we joke all the time. Almost on every channel every every group there but yeah. uh it's a fun it's a fun little area and if you haven't joined it's only a dollar a month yep or Minim minimum, minimum, of a minimum, month. minimum minimum donate more if you, you want can, yeah donate more if you want that's how stuff keeps going around here yep um it does help though the more but still a minimum is a dollar and it's fantastic you get access to jeff myself steve Rhett, pretty much almost 24 hours a day someone is on that channel yes is up on there yep um yeah steven Rhett honestly never sleep yeah um they're up until about two in the morning and then john or i john and i are both up at six yeah so, so yeah usually i'm like wake up on you know the john yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm usually 6 a.m i'm checking discord yeah so. so yeah join the join the patreon down in the video description every dollar helps uh, and goes directly back into content mm -hmm. and i've got a project coming yeah. up that goes back into white claw goes back into white claw uh, I do have a project coming up that is very, very exciting that I have been talking about on the Discord uh, that uh, has cost me a pretty penny. Yes, you do get early, you get to see uh, early access of stuff that's going on behind the scenes and everything yep. like that too, which is yep. really fun. So, and in fact, I spent another hundred and forty-five dollars on that project today. Yesterday, I spent another two hundred and eighty dollars on it. I uh, spent the initial two eighty. It's probably on... going to be your lowest viewed video ever. Uh, no. <laughs> 
The, ne- next to next to our beer our beer vlog. That's actually not the worst. It's not the worst. Surprisingly enough, that's not the worst. Uh, video. The not no the brew fest. Yeah, that's really? not the worst video. Oh, not a, not, that... not by a long shot. <laughs> yep, that one's over a thousand. You have one less than a thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I have I have two less than one thousand. Oh. Yep. And and they're more recent than I'd like them to be too. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that they were after I hit like sixty five thousand subs, and we went out and we we did a couple of videos, and and I think one of them's at like four hundred and fifty. Oh, yeah, it, it was bad. It was bad. Oh wait, was it one of your Vegas ones? No. Oh no, it was I, one. I can see that. No, it was one of the Pax videos. Oh, okay, that's yeah. not bad. I, I can see that. Though. Yep. Yep. That's Actually, a... two of the Pax videos did. Yeah, very, okay, very I, I can see that though. Yeah. That's... yeah, people didn't like the live interviews. I I won't be doing live interviews again. I can see that. Yep. But uh, we were talking about upgrading our prices of uh, big computers. Yep. And everything like that. So uh, one of the other issues of doing that is also not just CPU, but graphics cards. Yep. And what is coming out recently? Uh, Custom version, custom board partner cards of the Radeon RX 5700 series are arriving on retail sites. We've seen the reviews releasing over the last week or so. Uh, they're finally available to purchase, uh, well, starting yeah. with the Sapphire Pulse, and I've also seen uh, uh, an Asus card dropping, and I think I saw a Gigabyte card as well. Yeah. Uh, so starting to trickle out from board partners, uh, and prices are pretty reasonable. The 5700 being only about $560 on Newegg. Yeah. Uh, the, the Sapphire Pulse, and the, the Pulse is a great series of card. I, I've had a couple different Pulse cards over the years. Uh, most recently, I think I had an RX 588 gig. Um, and it was a fantastic card. Great thermals, great performance. Fans were deadly quiet. Um, but yeah. Yep. So anyway, if you're interested in a uh, Radeon 5700, uh, you can actually go buy them now. So there's that. Mm. Sorry. Got a <laughs> warning from work. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Not right now. Yeah. Well, no, it's just the, the virus detection system. Oh, okay. What? what, what? Yeah, I silenced my phone during the show. Well, it was silenced, but I was like, why, why is that messaging me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I never get those. All right. Uh, we've talked about uh, my love of open source. I, I love open source projects. Um, even when they don't necessarily make a lot of sense in the world, they're still to like implement, mm-hmm. they're still important to use. I, I use a number of open source projects, both professionally and, and here around the house. Um, uh, and I've done uh, videos on, on both Proxmox and FreeNAS. Uh, you can, uh, FreeNAS not being an open source project, I don't think, uh, but, uh, but Proxmox certainly being an open source project, yep. basically a shell for KVM with a lot of new features implemented into it. Um, I do love me some open source and I love Linux in general. Um, even if I'm not the most well-versed person yeah. in Linux. Uh, one they com- do some cool things. Right, absolutely. Uh, one company in particular that has really been embracing the open source mantra, both software and hardware, has been System76. System76 is the uh, the point, yeah, point people uh, on uh, Pop! OS, which is yep. a Debian derivative, uh, very user-friendly Linux distro. Um, I've I've been experimenting with that one lately, just trying to, you know, test the waters on it, see how I like it. Um, it is definitely more consumer oriented, more like Windows transition oriented, very similar to Ubuntu, um, but it has some really nice features in it that I've been really impressed with as of late. Um, but that's not the big news we're talking about today. We're talking about System76 unveiling their latest laptop, which includes Core Boot. Now, if you're not aware what Core Boot is, Core Boot is an open source replacement for UEFI and BIOS at the motherboard level. Yeah. Um, BIOS is a proprietary system. It, it's a proprietary communication between the software stack on your system and the hardware stack that is your 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 hardware. Yeah. Um, what Core Boot is is an open source derivative of that, or, or not derivative, but an open source replacement or, yeah. for BIOS and UEFI boot systems that allows you direct access to modify the BIOS as you see fit. Um, so very, very interesting. Interesting, but dangerous. It, yeah. <laughs> you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know what you're doing. I mean, that, that's my own. I love the open source stuff. I love Linux, but then that comes down to the dangerous 
of yeah. you don't know what you're doing. And I, you know, I also find that a lot of forums too kind of already automatically assume you know what you're doing. That's my biggest problem with the community. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, get out. Yeah, they, exactly. You know, I, and they're like, no, no, no. I, I'm gonna come tell you back what, when you figured something yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you where command's at. And when I say the word command, I need you to know exactly what I'm talking about. And you need to go find it or, yeah. or whatever. You know, go yeah. to the root source. How do I get there? If you don't know how to get to the root, I don't even need to talk to you. Blah, 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 blah. Wine is not an emulator. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that that that's my biggest problem. But then that FreeNAS is open source. I thought they were, and I said it, and I went, "Wait, are they? Hold on." <laughs> so yeah, yeah. FreeNAS is an open source project. But yeah, that, uh, that, TrueNAS is closed source. That's uh, right. But that that's my only problem with uh, this is cool, and I really I have very similar to you. Like, oh, I want to use some mm -hmm. open source stuff, mostly for home, and I get to tinker around with it. Um, uh, but then it comes down to that if I don't know what I'm doing and then there are people that think they know what they're doing and they're like, oh, I see this. I kind of know some Linux and whatever. <laughs> tuck, 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 crash. Yeah, I, I love when the open source community says, well, you don't like the way something works? Well, then change it. If you don't like the kernels that are out there, we'll just compile your own. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because I have the ability to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned very early on, one of the most important things that you can discover as a person is learning what you can't do. <laughs> now, that's not to say that you can't achieve something, you can't learn something as you go around, but John, we've known each other for many, many years. You are a programmer. Yeah. I am not. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I live in the hardware and operating system space. I, I'm more of a DevOps kind yeah. of guy. Um, I can implement just about anything, and I can... I can read some some basic coding and scripting, and I've done some some pretty complex scripting in my day, but I am not a programmer. Yeah. I, I like to call myself a parrot, where if you want me to write a program that does something, I literally cannot form the code in my head and then mm -hmm. put it to put it to screen and then run it. Yeah. What I can do is if I've learned how to do a function. Repeat that function. Yes. Um, and 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 repeat it in the exact context that I know it in. Yes. And maybe modify it to my own to my own needs, mm -hmm. but not do it myself. Not understand how each feature works. And oh, I can adapt that feature to do that. Exactly. That. Yeah. And and hardware that's a wonderful skill to have. Yeah. Uh, I I am very good at uh, bending hardware to my will, and in fact, a video on that is coming. <laughs> um, but uh, but as far as manipulating software. If it's not in the settings, it ain't happening. Yeah. So, uh, so when the Linux community goes, oh, just, just, you know, if you don't like the kernels out there, just build your own. Yeah. Not everyone can do that. No. Um, not and that, that's what gets my frustration as a yeah. programmer. I was like, ah, yeah, okay, I understand how this stuff works, but look, I spent all my time and I only have so much time <laughs> to spend on researching this because most of my time is at work while I'm researching it. Right. It's like, look, I got, I got forty-five minutes, <laughs> so I don't have time. Just wow, give me this. What's, what's going? We got on? four new patrons during the show, uh, so we already welcomed uh, 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 before, before Don. Dawn. We've got Gunner, uh, we've got uh, Arid Viper, and we've got Phoenix. So, and, <laughs> welcome, welcome to all of you. Yes, something is in the water tonight. Uh, someone says FreeNAS interface is a joke. Try 11.2 because 11.2 is a whole new thing and I really, really like the 11.2 yep. interface. Um, but uh, yeah, Reverend says it's a madhouse over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you all for, for joining the Patreon and uh, welcome. Yeah. Wel welcome to the insanity that is craft computing, I guess. Yes. Uh, so, but yeah, open source. It, it, it's fun if you know what you're doing. It's fun if you're wanting to tinker around with it. When you start really in depth getting into it, mm -hmm. it can be dangerous, but at the same time, there's a level of fun and excitement right. and danger. Right. Um, like I said, I, I I've implemented a number of, of different different Linux based servers. Uh, like I said, professionally and personally. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, FreeNAS is obviously BSD. I run that at home. Uh, I also run versions of, of FreeNAS professionally. Yeah. Uh, I've deployed those to clients before. Um, I I run everything from Ubuntu server to Arch to CentOS to to Mint to to uh, just whatever the flavor of the month is and whatever <laughs> whatever will do the job most yeah. adequately. But at the end of the day, it's all, you know, Star Nix mm -hmm. stuff. Um, 
and uh, and I've done a lot of different systems just from scratch. Yeah. You know, just figuring out how to how to implement them. So, open source is very very powerful, but the communities around them. Some of the communities are great. Some of them are not so great. Uh, are you guys going to get onto Floatplane? I would love to get onto Floatplane as soon as they will have me. Um, I know they just started opening that up. I know Epos Box recently got onto Floatplane, and there's a couple other other creators uh, that are that are on there as well. Uh, so if you are a fan of Epos Box, go join his Floatplane because uh, he makes some absolutely incredible content. Um, what is Floatplane? Floatplane is not Linus Media Group, but it's Luke, for, formerly from Linus. Oh. Um, his initiative to basically create a YouTube competitor. A, oh. a, a safe place for creators where it's a subscription-based service where you pay two ninety nine dollars a month to go join someone's page and view their content. Okay. And maybe have you have a value add added into that. Okay. Kind of like a, a Patreon YouTube combo oh, okay. deal. Um, where you are supporting the creator directly. They're getting a direct cut. Uh, and then uh, Floatplane is taking a cut of, of the proceeds oh, for operating budget. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they're finally starting to open it up a little bit. Um, and yeah, so very cool. I can't wait for my hops and brews invitation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, actually, it might, it might do you well. Uh, right now it's all tech people, but uh, hey, why not a craft beer guy? Right. Why not a craft beer guy? Speaking of craft beer, right. yeah, exactly. we're, we're finally done with the White Claw, so... It did those. take a bit. It did take a bit. But yeah. it, it was a big... It's 19 ounce. It's, it's a slower drinker. Yeah. Yep. Not as young as I once was. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't crush that. No. All right. So we got brand new glassware. That's right. What would you like to drink? Ooh. We got um, low, medium, high. I'm thinking this is going to be better the colder we have it. So let's start with this. Okay. Well, either this or the lager. Yeah, both both of those are supposed to be served. I didn't even think this dates like serve at 50 degrees. Oh, okay. So a little bit warmer than, uh, than it's typical. Well, maybe not. I mean, it, this is still pretty cold. Yeah. It's feel, I mean, it's sweating on the can. Yeah. And I'm sweating in here. <laughs> uh, best served cold for smooth, delicious refreshment. Either so, one. So we'll go, we'll go the colder one first. Okay. So we'll go medium, low, high. Medium, low, high. I'm sure this, Always end with a 10%er. That's my, right. That's well, what I anything say. barrel aids, 10% Grand Cru should be uh, served at a pretty decent temperature. Yes. Yeah, those, those are usually 55, 60. Ooh, it's uh, Four Hearts was aged in bourbon barrels for over two years. Ooh. So this is actually pretty old. I, I was actually uh, kind of guessing that this was only going to be a, uh, like, you know, Four month old, three month old, yeah, type thing. This has a wonderful smell to it. So these glasses, the, the best part about it is supposed to enhance yeah. aromatics, visualization, and uh, carbonation. Jeez, uh, right. poured, poured me a little short there. I did. And can you pour out of these? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like, good luck with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Jeff will just have to drink more than me tonight. I wasn't sure how large the are these sixteen ounce. No, they're oh. like. They're like 12s. twelve. Yeah, no, I thought. No, they no, were they're they're fourteen. Okay, yeah, I, I thought they're, they were about tulip size. They're, yeah, they're four, they're fourteen ounces. So if it was twelve, a, I would have nailed it. It's it's a pint, and then you get to drink a little yeah. sip yeah. out of out of the bottle or glass. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there we go. So here you got. The, so here you got the. It's still going. Oh, as soon as you did that. Weird. That was weird. That was very weird. We just dropped for a second. Yeah. I got a little notification on the bottom that said, OBS disconnected. And I went, ah! I didn't do anything. <laughs> We're not on Wi-Fi. This has a interesting aroma. Yeah. It's sweet, and yet there's a little funky there's apple. There's a funky tanginess to the smell. Yeah, but sweet. Not, not like farmhouse funky, but, but definitely funky. Yeah. Especially right up front. Once you get deep into it, it's sweet. It, yeah, it's sweet. It's appley. It's it's everything you want out of. Uh, not like apple pie sweet. Not, no. there's no cinnamon or it, anything it, like that. Yeah, it almost just smells like old apples. Yeah, and then and then fresh apples. You know, that is definitely. Uh, 
For some reason, I get well, like... remember it's wine yeast. Oh, okay. So I that's a, I get a little banana. Yeah, actually, which is kind of interesting. It's not your traditional apple cider. No, the, it is it, not. It, it's not your nutmeg, cinnamon, you know, allspice mix. Yeah. It's, this is very, very apple-y, but it's a, I taste it's that, a like, super rich apple. Kind of like crab apple or something at the, uh, yeah. the yellow, kind of like a yellow apple at the back end, yeah. too. That's weird. That's, it's, it's not bad. Honeycrisp. Okay, so it's Honeycrisp apples. Yeah. Yeah. And you really do taste that at the like back end. It lingers, yeah. and it's like, oh, yeah, that's a Honeycrisp apple, but that... <laughs> Initial taste is just off. Brew my own beer and run Proxmox on my desktop. Figure this channel fits. You are exactly in the right place, my friend. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to our next story. Um, so... <laughs> young man. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have complained for a long time about modern user interface design and particularly about automotive. I don't know if I've ever gone on length on this subject mm. on the show, but uh, the the 2019 Corvette or 2020 Corvette, the, the C8 Corvette was unveiled uh, this last month. And I have a real problem with part of the interior design choice. Mm. And it's, have you seen the pictures of this? I've, I've only seen the outside. I like the outside, just never seen it. The, the outside's outside. beautiful. I love the mid-engine design. I love the yeah. LT3. Uh, that they're going with. Uh, I, th I think the 2020 Corvette is going to be the car to beat and it really pisses me off because I've always wanted an Audi R8 <laughs> and it undercuts it by like $40,000. <laughs> and it's like, well, crap, now I have to buy a Corvette. A Corvette. And i got to be a uh, snob now. Either that or it's going to drop the price of the Audi R8 to a, to a reasonable level and I'll be able to snag one of those. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I have one major problem with the interior of the Corvette and it's the user interface of a lot of the buttons and knobs and mm -hmm. dials that you normally use. Um, so you've got your, your cockpit style and it's very driver centric in there. So it all just kind of surrounds you. There's a row of, there's a single row of buttons that starts up here by the radio okay. and comes all the way down the side and literally ends halfway down the driver's compartment. So like by the seatbelt. Right, and so you've got your, your infotainment system up here. You've got your heater controls up there. You've got your climate control and your, and your shifter. Um, and then a couple cup holders, like in the center. Yeah. And along the side of that is this bezel of single row of buttons. Okay. But it's a mix of physical buttons, touchscreen buttons, switches, and, and whatnot. And so nothing about that is intuitive at all. Um, the, the thing with cars is they should be a physical press for a function that you're yes. using. And it should be a similar location so it can be muscle memory. So if I go, oh, I need to turn this off, click, and it's there. Yeah. This is never ever going to be intuitive on no. a sing on a single row. Well, because then you're like, wait, 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 where is it? Right. Yeah, yeah, hold on, where was the yeah. heated seats? There we go. Yeah. It's not in a position you would intuitively press it at, and you have to physically look for it to press it. You're not gonna go by feel of where that particular yeah. button will be. Wipers are back at. here. Okay. <laughs> And to that end, touch screens are even worse oh, yeah. in a car. I hate touch screens in a car. For an infotainment, I can I can live with it. For a choose your radio station or even change, those, uh, even those I'm a little like like the whole Tesla. I forget what the wing the the, the SUV yeah. the family one where it's just a giant touch. Well, screen. and the Model S is the same. Yeah, way. I I don't like that. I I don't like it for all of the car features. I do like it for uh for like I said the infotainment stuff. Uh, for your GPS, there's too many functions oh. in there to be able to manage. Yeah. Uh, for, for your audio settings and everything else, you can do a menu-based system, but make it like a one or two layer menus, and that's it. It should not be this deep, you know, BMW system, you know. Settings, display, clock, da 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 yeah. da You know, I, I shouldn't have to go four menus deep to find the option that I need. Um, Touchscreens on a battleship? <laughs> probably an even worse idea. <laughs> they probably adjust the angle. It, it's like all those video games of adjust the angle. All right, fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a story that uh, that started actually a number of months ago with a uh, fatal crash involving the USS John McCain, uh, which is a DDG-56 uh, uh, Navy cruiser. Yep. Um, this happened off the coast of Singapore. 
uh, and it collided with a merchant ship and killed some of the people on the merchant ship. And apparently after an investigation, it was found that the throttle controls on the new cockpit designs of these cruisers is pretty much inoperable. Uh, yeah. the, the, the operators were having a very, very difficult time saying, oh, I need to be at you know 20% throttle or 40% yeah. throttle. And adjusting um, it with a slide or something. Right. Um, and so as a result of this, the Navy has banned touch screens from their control room. Oh, that's the that's the coolest part of a boat is the actual handle. I want right. physical handle. Right, and and like I said, for a car, and and and, and I'll keep saying this, and, and like fighter jet and everything else, vehicle. I, I I need the control and the dial and the button and the adjustment there when yeah. I need it. There's no going through a menu to find anything else. There's no looking down at my screen and going, okay, where's the there's the throttle. Okay, well, yeah. we're gonna bring it down. I need it there, or I need it there, or I need, okay, traction control. Yeah, I mean, I understand this for dials and and everything Mm -hmm. like that, but yeah. For your displays, LCDs are a great technology. Yeah, it's great, but what what happens in a, let's say, combat situation, right? screen cracks, what happens? Mm -hmm. What happens? Because that'll happen. You know, what happens is, over time, those displays will... Well, the photon torpedo explodes and the sparks come out of the display. and <laughs> Right? And then the guy flies <laughs> over. And then the whole shit just shakes like this. We're not going to talk Star Trek today. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you seen the, uh, the Will Wheaton tabletop games with Jerry Ryan? No. Uh, so Will Wheaton hosts a tabletop games where he brings on celebrities to play tabletop games with him. Yeah. Um, he had Jerry Ryan on there, and they were playing Settlers of Catan. Anyway, um, he's uh, they they had this segment on there where uh, someone asked him about uh, you know you you served on different ships and whatnot, and uh, and what's what's one thing you know camaraderie wise that you guys can can relate on? And they said the Star Trek shake, the the shake. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, and uh, it, it's the universal language among Star Trek. That uh, that it's like oh we're in some turbulence right now or we're in a battle and so all of a sudden they went ready okay go hit hit and 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 they're just perfectly synchronized in everything <laughs> that they did and and one's on Voyager and one's on TNG and they just like went right onto it and uh, and they said so so what was that and Will goes that was about a four yeah about a four okay you know we definitely took some damage shields were down <laughs> but it was this like universal language that just united them oh yeah because you've all been in battles or turbulence <laughs> or coming out of the nebula okay <sighs> okay yeah so you've done it for so long you you know what everything is it's right that instinct yeah. in the back of your head but yeah, and at the same time, though, kind of back to this story. And, and I, I don't want to make you feel old, but Will Wheaton recently celebrated his wife's 50th anniversary. His wife's 50th? His day? wife turned 50. Oh, oh, you mean his fifth birthday? No. His wife is 50 now. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton's wife is 50. Yes. You said their 50th anniversary. Oh, no. Yeah, it's sorry, sorry. Her, her 50th birthday. I was birthday. like, oh my gosh, she's older than my parents. Right, no. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, he's, uh, his wife, yeah, he's, he's in his late forties. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So he's older than Picard. <laughs> he's older than Picard when Picard started commanding the Enterprise D. Yeah. He's almost Picard in Picard Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Basically. <laughs> supposedly. Supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he, he went to a costume party recently dressed as, as, uh, William Riker. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> I saw that one. That was funny. Okay, you've had a bit too much to drink. No. No. It's White Claw. Uh, four, 5%. 5% even. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think over an hour, 5% is going to do anything. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, no, back, back to this. Touchscreen throttling or anything like that just doesn't work. I mean, even on like power plants... Any kind of, uh, just even in video games, yeah. even, even just playing video games on phones or anything, we're like, oh, I got to dial that. It's just not as accurate. I have a, a motion control system for my camera. You can see it right there. Yes. I have an Edelcron three axis motion controller for my camera. It's how I get some of my sexy B-roll shots. Um, it's smartphone control. And on the smartphone, you have two joysticks that you can manip- manipulate. And they are the most finicky pieces of garbage yeah i have ever used in my life because there's no dead zone to them all of a sudden you're like moving and then you let go and the and the controller goes "Eh, okay we'll stop here it's like that's not the angle i wanted yeah and so 
getting the angle dialed in takes me longer than doing the move by hand sometimes. Now it's smoother, so it's worth doing, but it's it doesn't save me any time. Um, and it's because of, of touch controls. And someone said, I hate driving the Lincoln Navigator because of the push button automatic transmission. That's what killed, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Chekhov from... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the new Star Trek. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the Russian kid. At, at age 27, he had a, a Jeep Cherokee with, with the, the push-button automatic transmission. Thought it was in park, put it into neutral, got out yeah. of his car to check the mail, and got pinned between a Jeep yeah. and a mailbox. Tragic, terrible, terrible story. Um, but these kinds of interfaces kill people, as the Navy proved. Yeah. Um, and Anton Yelchin, thank you. Yeah. His name escaped me. It, yeah. Stop. Somehow everything comes back to Star Trek. I can Trek. do that. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything comes back to Star Trek. Yeah. Um, on another subject, though, that yeah. uh, we've touched base a lot on this channel. I mean, yes. it's probably number one, number two, that other than Star Trek, as far as tech related, <laughs> number one or number two, that has been talked the most. And that's right to repair. Right to repair. Right to repair is a big, huge deal. Uh, and I think probably the biggest offender, and I think probably the biggest offender of that is Apple. They are certainly always in the crosshairs. Yeah. Or always have repair advocates in the crosshairs. Yeah. As it seems. Um, so Apple, public enemy number one, it is seems, is in the news again. Uh, and not for the latest. I, well, right. <laughs> but not for the latest cell phone or tablet or computer. Right. It's for uh, Apple disabling battery repairs Gosh. on your iPhone. Uh, out of the guise of being transparent um, and, and giving the customers exactly what they want. Um, so what they are doing is they are locking out customers from seeing battery health notifications. Yeah on third-party batteries. Now, the iPhone is fully capable of diagnosing a battery on its own. Uh, when you put a lithium-ion battery into a device and it charges, there's a charging circuit that measures the voltage of a full battery and of a dead battery and of the increments in between. And, it know, and there's a, a small piece of silicon inside the battery itself, a small integrated circuit that reads how many times that battery has been cycled through its charge cycle. Yeah. Um, so you'll say, oh, I have 325 charge cycles on this battery. You know, I'm, I'm at 70% health yeah. or 60% health or whatever my life cycle expectancy is. Um, and, and at full charge, I should be giving out 5.82 volts and, and I'm only giving out 5.78. And, and so my, my battery life is decreased. The phones know this. This has been a universal metric for, for God knows how long. Yeah. Uh, since lithium has been the battery of choice over NICAD. Um, and... What Apple is doing is disabling that interface and disabling that, that lookup on third-party batteries now um, as a way to combat third-party battery replacements. Yeah. They want you to take it to an Apple authorized service center and get an Apple OEM battery installed for more than twice the price. Well, it's not even that, too. It's not even just they want you to buy their battery. They want them to install it. Yes. Because they need... So, uh, who is it? Uh, yeah. This, this issue is the reason I ditched Apple for a phone. Yeah. This issue right here is not having the right to repair my own battery. Yeah, the art to repair. The right. Jared, or Justin, Justin from yeah. the, yeah, because he, he found this out a while ago, but you can even put a g genuine Apple battery in mm -hmm. there, but because uh, a, a Apple genius or whatever doesn't put the right authentication code in afterwards yep. it still says nope sorry this is bad yep don't know who you are don't know who you are yep. not doing it that they are wanting authentication between the battery and the phone it is placed in after the battery install yeah and that is just horse crap um and uh louis, Ro louis rossman has talked about this as well um that they're doing it under the guise of privacy and 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 transparency it's anything but they yeah. want you to pay their price yeah. and that's the end of the discussion um, now, Apple has posted a, a public response about this. They've made a statement. And they say, we take the safety of our customers very seriously and want to make sure that any battery replacement is done properly. Okay. Uh, and, and when I went to have my phone serviced, they did that under the guise of safety as well. Yeah. Um, 
They said, I can't, uh, this is a direct quote from an Apple genius. Um, I can't take the, I can't take the lives of my employees and everyone in the store if I open that phone because I do not know, into my own hands, because I do not know the condition of the, of the battery inside your phone. He thinks it's a bomb? He thought it was going to level the city block if he opened the phone with a repaired battery. Oh, my God. Um, so I, I replaced the battery on my iPhone 6S Plus, and the phone was still overheating. The, the original reason I replaced the, the, the battery was the phone was overheating and, and it was dying. Um, it was, it was uh, not charging overnight anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it was dying after about an hour and a half of use. It was getting super hot. Uh, and I just figured, oh, just replace the battery and I'm good. Yeah. So I replaced the battery. It cost me 15 bucks, you know, $18 maybe. I bought one of the nicer uh, batteries on, on Amazon. Replaced the battery myself. Did, didn't solve the issue. Didn't do it one, one bit. Um, uh, charged, tried to charge the phone overnight. Char phone got to like 25 or 30% overnight mm -hmm. and then died an hour later after it was on, off the charger. Jeez. Um, and, uh, so I went, okay, well, it must be a logic board issue or something like yeah. that. And I know I can't swap the logic board because, well, Apple locks out the, the, the touch ID if I do that. So I took it to an Apple center and I just went, I just need the phone repaired. Yeah. I, I don't care about the battery. I've already done the battery. Yeah. I know this is a brand new battery. So this right. is good. I just need the phone repaired. And by the way, I'm still making $40 payments on my iPhone 6S plus <laughs> because it's only been 18 months. Now my warranty had expired, but... Yeah, but the phone was. It's still yeah right should, yeah. Um, so took it to Apple to an, an Apple store. Drove forty minutes to to get to the closest Apple store, and uh, and and I told them you know the phone's overheating and it's not holding a charge anymore and da 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 and uh, and after two hours at the Apple store, which is a whole other story entirely. Um, um, I said I've already replaced the battery. I just need to know what the cost is going to be to service the rest of the phone. Pretend the battery doesn't exist, just like a car yeah. repair. Hey, my my thing is making a noise. I already replaced the tires. Just pretend those are OEM tires. You're still on the hook for the brakes. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's that kind of thing. That's how car service works. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I said, I've already replaced the battery. And the dude goes, whoa, 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 and drops the phone on the table. And gives me that line that he can't take the lives of his employees and everyone in this building into his hands because he doesn't know the condition of a battery. A battery is a controlled chemical reaction. It's, it's power in, power out. The, the same lithium cells go into a third party battery as they do a first party battery. Maybe different quality cells, yeah, but... Yeah, maybe slightly different voltage for whatever quality check right. reasons, but... but but the phone was still overheating and all I wanted was a quote to repair the logic board, to yeah. replace the logic board on it. And and they said, I literally will not touch your phone. Like he literally did this. And he's like, well, you already touched it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but basically his, his explanation was uh, was he could burn the whole building down if he touched my phone. Oh. And I went, I'm done with Apple. And I, yeah. I sold all of my Apple gear. I don't own anything Apple anymore, uh, personally. Um, I still do use an Apple laptop for work. I have an original MacBook, the 12 inch MacBook, because it's got 10 hour battery life and still works. And Wait, I was just... this during the time of the, uh, what was it, like the Samsung Note 8 or 9? The 7. The 7? The, the Note the, 7. The grenade? Yeah. The, was this around the that GTA time? The GTA 5 grenade. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Wasn't that like a mod on a video game? Like instead of grenades, you had a... <laughs> it was. It was in GTA 5. <laughs> you could throw Samsung Note 7s. Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, so we take the safety of our customers very seriously and want to make sure that any battery replacement is done properly. There are now over 1,800 Apple authorized service providers across the U.S., so our customers have even more convenient access to quality repairs. Last year, we introduced a new feature to notify customers if they were unable to verify that a new genuine battery was installed by a certified Apple technician for the repair process. So basically, call out Apple repair technicians who aren't installing genuine OEM parts and saving a couple of bucks. And, uh, and we'll give you a finder's fee and we'll ban them for life. Yeah. Um, this information is there to help protect our customers from damaged, poor quality, or used batteries that can lead to safety or performance issues. Never mind that Apple is throttling previous phones with degrading cells and not disclosing that to customers in the guise of Which we found out later. transparency. Yeah. Uh, this notification does not impact the customer's ability to use the iPhone after an unauthorized repair. However, I would argue that a notification popping up daily on my phone that this phone has an unauthorized battery in it is hampering my use of that phone. 
Oh yeah, constantly. And then it's also using the part of the battery because yeah. of the message. I gotta use it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I fix it says the last sentence perplexed, perplexed us a bit. We believe the ability to use the phone involves being able to see the battery's health information so you'll know when it's time to replace the battery again. It'd be like driving a car without an oil dipstick. How are you supposed to know when you need to add oil? And that is my whole thing. Yeah. If you can't repair your device, do you actually own it? And if I do repair the device, how am I going to be treated if I go to Authorized Service Center to get the device re-synced up and re-repaired via a logic board? Because I couldn't replace the logic board myself because my touch ID would stop working. Yeah. And there was a good chance that my screen was gonna that my touch screen was gonna stop working anyway because of touch disease on the iPhone sixes. So <laughs> Anyway, long story short, Apple, crappy move. Yeah. You, when was the last time Apple did a really good move? It's been a while. It has been a while. I mean, there hasn't been anything that they've released. 2011? Say, yeah, I was going to say at least maybe? five, six years yeah. of like, oh, that's innovative. Instead of a, hey, we have a, a new camera filter that turns your face into a live mm -hmm. emoji. Yep. Who, who cares about that? You know? Looks like there's a slight visual delay. Is the camera hot? No, camera's not hot. Yeah, they're saying there's some audio sync issues. Yep. It's the same sync settings I use every single time. There's always been a little bit of a sync issue during live and then 24 hours after post, it always yeah. seems to have fixed itself. Yeah. There are very few. Or videos. sometimes it's fine during the show and then it breaks itself. Yeah. It's, it's happened both ways. Uh, the last time Apple did a good move was when Steve Jobs was still breathing. And, um, and there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, there is. Yep. Uh, the, the worst thing that you can do as a replacement for someone who led a company, who led a department, who led an industry, who led whatever, is be the replacement and say, well, they did it this way, so we're going to continue doing it this way. Yeah. You need to bring your own ideas. And you're, you're not that guy, so you can't anticipate what right. he would have done. Right. Uh, but you, that's also a cop out. You are not Steve Jobs. You did not have these ideas. You don't know what direction Steve intended. No matter how much he wrote them down, you don't know what his full intentions are in the direction that he wanted to go. Yeah. So you need to take what the base of his ideas were and go your own direction. What I saw as of 2012 Apple was continuing, well, Steve Jobs wanted things thinner. And so let's go thinner and let's go more proprietary and let's develop more parts and everything else. When Steve Jobs took back over Apple in 1997, he said, we make 470 parts. Screw that, we're gonna make 10 and we're yeah. gonna do them really well. And when you can build 10 things really, really well, we'll do 12. And when you can do 12 things really, really well, we'll do 14. And the Apple that was the juggernaut in 2004 through 2012, that literally couldn't be stopped by anything if they put their toe in the industry. Oh yeah. Um, was that mentality. We're gonna do one thing and we are going to be the absolute best at doing that one thing. Yeah. They made the, the best laptop on the planet for a number of years, from 2008 to about 2013. They, they created the iPod and the whole industry. They created the smartphone industry that we know today. Oh, because yeah. remember smartphones before Apple, Android, um. Android fans, you can argue this till you're blue in the face and you're dead wrong. Uh, Apple invented the smartphone market because prior to Apple entering that market, the Palm Trio was the best thing out there. Yeah. And then other than that, you had the Samsung Blackjack and whatever the heck HTC was trying to do with Windows Mobile. I had that phone. I like that. So phone. did I. I. I had an eighty one fifty. Yeah. And and it was hot garbage. <laughs> I kinda liked it. Yeah. It's like Windows three point oh or three point five. Windows Mobile Five. Yeah, it sounded like it was. a mobile five, that's what it was. It was hot garbage. I it was could hot back garbage. My way around it. <laughs> right. But but that was the the mobile phone and smartphone industry before Apple entered the game. Yes. Now who doesn't have a smartphone? Yes. Because they're easy to use, because they're intuitive, because you can use them. They created that industry. Yes. Since Steve Jobs died and a couple of years after, because obviously they there's some products took, yeah. in the stack that, that were yet to come out. Uh, the iPad's a great thing, but they really haven't done anything with the iPad since the iPad. 
No, let's make it bigger. Let's make it smaller. Let's that's that's all they're they're just increasing the size in different ways. Right. That's and so doing. the iPad was very innovative, uh, and and I loved the iPad, but they didn't do much beyond the iPad. No. They they added a pencil to it that you have to charge with a male plug instead of a female plug for some god unknown reason. Um, and plug it into the base of your iPad and then break the charger off in your iPad. And hey, now you got a $1,400 brick. Congratulations. Well, that's why. Right. Um, they have a mouse that you have to plug in from the bottom side. Uh, they've, they've got all these other things that like, well, we didn't want to see a charging port. Well, no, Steve Jobs said, I don't want to see a charging port, but I want the device to flip and work. Yeah. And, and integrate it into the design. And what it feels like is they said, well, Steve Jobs didn't want to see a charging port, and well, Steve Jobs' word is lost, so we're just going to put the charger on the bottom, because that's what he would have done. Bull. That is not what he would have done. No. Yeah, no. He would have argued that there's a, this, this design. There was design and then function, too. Yeah. That was the thing. And it seems post... Oh, whoops. Did I just delete that one? I did. You might have. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steve Jobs' post was always about design and function, too. Yes, yes. And it was always a very nice, sleek design. If it didn't, if the function got no, or if the design got in the way of the function, he would adjust the design. Yeah. Um, there's a great story of, uh, was it Michael Eisner or Bob Iger? I, I forget which Disney CEO, but right around the same time that, um, uh, about a year before Steve Jobs was going to unveil the iPhone. He, he met, I believe it was the CEO of ESPN, which was at the time joining Disney. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, the guy walked up to Steve Jobs and said, hi, I'm so-and-so. And, uh, and Steve Jobs' words to him was, your phone is a heaping pile of... <laughs> and those are the first words he said to him. I don't know if they were cordial after that, but if you remember in 2005, late 2005 or 2006... ESPN made a flip phone with like ESPN specific applications oh. on it so you could watch NFL highlights or some crap like that. And uh, and that's what Steve Jobs told him. <laughs> yeah, and F the lightning port. You're not alone in that. There There is no reason in the world other than being proprietary that it should be lightning over, uh, over USB-C. Especially because the iPads are USB-C yeah. now. Trying to reopen. I was trying to reopen it, but uh, yeah, don't you, worry about it. Wh right. Which one did you delete? The uh, the next one. The, yeah, the next one. Oh, the, the hundred. The hundred. Samsung has a one hundred megapixel camera. We need to get back, get back on track anyway. Yeah. So, so, we, so we we spent way too long on right to repair. Yeah. So and, and Apple hate in general. Well, I mean, it kind of had a kind of had a transition because of Apple hardware and yeah. iPhones and everything like that. But um, Samsung has revealed or uh, unveiled the first mobile camera or camera on a mobile phone that yep. will be over 800 megapixels yes 108 to be 108 precise. uh and this is a uh a collaboration collaboration, collaboration. uh with xiaomi uh to create a 108 megapixel smartphone camera sensor called the isocell bright hmx it will take ultra detailed photos and super high resolution video of up to 6k at yep. 30 frames per second um this increases the previous high on a smartphone from 27 to 108. I know. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, smart, for smartphone with a camera sensor of up to 100 megapixels, uh, the upcoming Xiaomi smartphone uh, is likely to feature the ISOCELL, and it's unclear if Samsung will incorporate the same sensor into their flagship phones, um, or if other phones will receive the sensor either. Uh, but it is coming. Smartphone yeah. cameras typically have between a 12 and a 16 megapixel, and in my opinion, that's all you need. Yeah. Especially in a sensor that's the size of an eraser head. Well, yeah. Smaller than an eraser head. I don't know. It'll be uh, interesting to see. There have been some huge strides in cell phone photography taking and mm -hmm. video taking. That versus the 27, 24 megapixel, whatever. I don't know. I think, actually, I think this has like a, a 40. Uh, 12, this, I think. Pretty sure I got a 12. Uh, but but it, there is a difference. You got a 12. <laughs> Sorry, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you totally should. 
<laughs> uh, so Bite My Bits had a question earlier, and uh, he said, uh, Hey guys, so I'm looking for a 10 gig switch of between 8 and 10 ports with RJ45, no fiber stuff that does 10 gig. Can you help oh, me out? Yeah. Uh, oh, and it has to be a decent price. And so I said, 10 gig, RJ45, decent price, pick two. Because that's the option. <laughs> and he just responded, but, 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 pick two, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, I guess he's only at, this has an 18. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and I'm at 12. Yeah, so. Um, anyway, uh, previous high on smartphones has been 4K at 60 frames. We are going to get 6K at 30 frames. Honestly, I'm not overly impressed by that in a smartphone camera. There's, there's so many limitations of the lenses in those and and the sensor size and and the proximity of the sensors to or the proximity of the pixels to one another yeah. there's a lot of image noise generated and that lens is not going to be up to snuff to get the sharpness that you need for a 6k video it's just not it's not even up to snuff for a 1080p video in my opinion this is a, it's not even up to snuff for a 1080p video in my opinion this is a 1080p sensor uh, with a halfway decent lens it's the sony kit 18 to 50 uh, OSS lens, and it does okay. You know, nice blur. When you get 4K, you've got to get something like a Sigma 18 to 35, which is on that camera right there. But that 4K sensor is actually a what a 22 megapixel sensor on the Fuji XT3. That's an APS-C size sensor, so that's about the resolution and detail that I would expect from this camera and lens combination. Yeah. Um, if I went to a higher megapixel count or a higher K count, I guess, in videography speak, uh, I would need to upgrade my lens. Well, Blackmagic Cinema has thought of everything. <laughs> Which I think I deleted that article. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it up? No, go. I, I thought I saw you had. Go, I thought I did too. I saw it There's, up just a second ago. No, no, you did. I did. Son of a. Unless it got moved. Can't you open previous tabs? What's I don't know. Where's that? I looked in the history. Open, close tab. Uh, control, shift, T. Hey, there we go. Hey, there's a Samsung. Do one more. No, let's do one more. Do one more. No, okay. No, no. So where's the black magic at? It was there right here. No, that's the Samsung. Oh wait, no. Nope. You son <laughs> I don't think you ever put it up. There. I put John in charge of one thing. And that was to bring white cloth no. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh anyway. Smooth transition ruined. Uh Black Magic Cinema, Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Yes. As a camera nut, oh my god. Yeah, I saw that article. I was like, I'm not even going to read this because I'm not going to understand a damn thing about it. So they've taken the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which was a micro four-thirds lens mount and a 4K sensor, micro four-thirds size sensor. They've put an EF mount lens or an EF mount onto the front of the camera, which I'm like, ooh, I'm already kind of interested. Mm -hmm. 6K sensor on a Super 35 size. So double the sensor size, 6K resolution. Um, does Something like that. Yeah, the, well, postage stamp. Yeah, oh, really? It's about the size, yeah. Damn. Roughly the size. Um, the camera itself, the, the whole box. Uh, no, the, the camera is about DSLR size. It's it's between these two. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's about that size. Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger than, a, bigger than a smartphone, smaller than a bread box. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's bigger, it's not pocket size. Okay. It, it's the pocket cinema camera. The original 1080p camera was pocket sized, kind of, but without a lens. Uh, unless you use the weird uh, Olympus pinhole 40 millimeter, which was literally just like two millimeters thick. Uh, anyway, pocket cinema camera 6K unveiled $2,500. Oh my God, looks incredible. God, I want $2,500 bucks. Buys you a lot of camera. Yeah, it gets you a lot of camera. Girl. Buys you a lot more camera today. Gets me a lot of beer. It does get you a lot of beer. <laughs> That's why I'm on 4K. <laughs> <laughs> Not 6K. Yeah, that that camera was 1,200 bucks. So, 
People are still complaining about the audio. Yeah, issues. I know. There's nothing I can do to fix it live during the stream. Uh, I think it was fine, and then it went out of sync when I wonder if that glitched. Discord disconnected momentarily. Don't seem... I mean, on my end, it's fine. There's no delay in my video signal. Everything looks yeah. fine. I'm not checking the audio here, but everything looks fine from my end. Um, I think it's just something you have to deal with. Uh, how bad is the is the desync? That's my question. Yeah. There you go. For what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, seems to be an issue with YouTube. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> how are they supposed to sync that up? Oh, the look I shot you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if we can get that as the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> I will make that the thumbnail. <laughs> Quarter to a half second. That's not terrible. It's very small. Not much at all on my TV. I'm not getting any. Third second. Okay. So, so the more you drink, the more we sync up. That's right. So it's not bad. Enough to notice. Uh, hard to peg down a measurement. Okay, so it's it's not long. I think it happened when Discord or when OBS disconnected briefly because there was about a one second drop that was probably it um it is not consistent well that's interesting like when you turn shutter on that's interesting too anyway uh so black magic pocket cam 6k looks freaking incredible not gonna buy one because i'm not gonna benefit from 6k workload i can barely do a 4k workload as it is yeah um that's why i need a new thread ripper um, speaking of companies going out of business, <laughs> uh, Loot Crate it declared bankruptcy. Oh, yeah. Well, that is actually a little sad. I I bought a triple on Loot Crate. Really? Oh, I never got into Loot Crate. Yeah, I I, I only bought a couple of things from them ever. I uh, got a couple of packages, uh, threw most of it away because most of it was garbage. Yeah, that's what I, um, it's always been those subscription things like, this is garbage, this is garbage. I wanted that one thing from them and then right. everything else was garbage. Right, exactly. Uh, so Loot Crate, uh, going out of business, uh, defaulting on tw $21 million loan Yeah, gosh. Uh, from 2017. Even though it has 250,000 subscribers, um, it tried to funnel 50, or 10 million into the bankruptcy loan to keep operations afloat and the creditors were having none of it. So, almost like a slapback delay on a guitar or a flam on a drum is the delay. Does he know we're musicians? He does. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming Guitar Guy I'm, yeah. knows Well, that. I assume Guitar Guy is a musician. Yeah. But does he know that we are one? Yeah. So I got the slap back, and I'm sure you got the I got the, got the drum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. Nailed it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Music ed degree. I was pursuing a music ed degree at one point. Uh, I just did music. Yeah. He's just the drummer. I'm just the drummer. <laughs> you can't expect much out of him. Um, <laughs> hello from the Philippines. The SIP audio hood sinks just fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Glad John was able to clear that That's up. That's right. Us. That's right. I knew it was good for something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent choice in glassware, by the way, John. Thank you. Thank you for that. No problem. I expect to see them on all of them. They actually do make really good cocktail glasses. Yes. As well. I, I'm actually already planning a cocktail. In one so of these, these uh, and they'll look fancy for all your B rolls. Although it is not the glass you have on your logo. So it's just like, eh. Mm -hmm. But now, if you have a, a smaller beer, 12 ounce beer, it'll look fancy in your the background as That's you're true. drinking it. Um, and you know, I actually am lacking on 12 ounce glassware. I've only yeah. got two 12 ounce glasses up in my cabinet up there. Well, the beauty part, these, these are these are 14. Yeah. And so if you do a heavy pour, that still gives you two ounces a head. Exactly. So it'll look nice. Yeah. Yep. And, and mixed reports on the audio. Um, it could be just a YouTube live stream issue Which where where, where it disconnected and then reconnected. Yeah. And uh, what YouTube does, especially at the 1080 resolution, is an ACC stream alongside an MP4 stream. The MP4 stream actually doesn't have audio with it, so they're actually delivering both at the same time. And if there's an interruption in YouTube, it'll deliver the audio just fine because that'll sync back up first and then it'll deliver the video behind it. It's probably what happened. Who knows? 
Anywho, uh, so yeah, Loot Crate uh, closed down its warehouse, laid off 150 workers this last week. Uh, and, last month, actually. Yeah. That was, yeah. Last yeah. month, they laid off that many. Uh, they deal do still say they will promise all uh, boxes currently ordered, currently ordered to go out. Right. Probably won't happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, because it's been probably such a delay. Um, there are, I think, some interested parties looking to purchase mm -hmm. uh, the remaining um, assets of Loot Crate. Yep. Uh, customer billing and still owes at least $20 million worth of shipments to customers. Yeah, that's a hard one to swallow. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, a the debtor is collecting the customer subscriptions and then withholding the merchandise. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Uh, uh, Fallout 4 fans may feel... Coming again. Hold on. Ooh. In sync. Uh -huh. Sync those up. There we go. How was this, the sync on that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fallout 4 fans may feel especially frustrated if Loot Crate fails to fulfill all of its missing shipments. Folks who subscribe to the six-part Fallout Series 2 set, which costs $228 each, in hopes of getting the Complete Liberty Prime set... <laughs> threes the truck. There it is. They come in threes. Uh, could end up never receiving the head to the Liberty Prime. <laughs> yeah, because they've got five out of six. Woo. The sneeze was perfectly insane. Thank you. And the problem with having a really thick mustache is whatever gets left behind. Oh, yeah, it's always there, right? Yeah. yeah. I know. It's going to glisten in the sun for like two days. <laughs> Whew. All right. What else we got? We got uh, some Borderlands 3. <sighs> yeah. The game looks great. <laughs> I know, right? The game looks great. I don't think 2K could make any more missteps if they tried. Starting with the Epic Games exclusive. Yeah, because that'll work. Uh, right. I know you made a butt ton of money on it. I, I'm not happy with it. Competition or lack of competition never leads to anything good no. for anyone. Short-term goals, yes. Long-term, no. Uh, the launch at PAX was kind of meh. Like, people were excited for Borderlands, but they went, ooh, Epic, Epic? Games? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, God, they're a horrible platform to launch on. Right. Um, the latest news, on top of some other weird stuff that came out in the last couple weeks, is that uh, Borderlands 3 will be launching uh, with the Nuvo DRM, which is a basically secure ROM-style yeah. DRM. Uh, do you want pirates... Because that's how you get pirates. Oh, you're just begging them to be like, oh, we're going to break you. We're going to focus all on Borderlands 3 now. That's all they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, someone already even claimed that they broke... It wasn't Borderlands 3, but another DRM. denuvo has been broken a number of times. Yeah. Uh, there was... So it, it's it's going to be broken. You basically went and poked the, the bee's nest. <sighs> Sorry, music jokes. How does the soprano? How does the soprano sing a scale? Do re mi 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 mi. <laughs> um, and someone's been reading Reddit today. I wonder what would happen if Denuvo went bankrupt. Uh, you would have to hope and pray that someone cracked the Denuvo. Denuvo. Which I, I'm pretty sure someone's already had. Or pray that. for a patch. Yeah. Um, does everyone remember, like, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years ago? That's a, that's a big time. <laughs> when when piracy kind of ran rampant in, in PC circles where no one wanted to develop for the PC because everything on the PC was pirated. Oh, yeah. Like, was, everything. So it was, like, early, early 2000s. Right. Er, yeah. Early to mid-2000s. Yeah. Um, and then drawing on into like 2010 and 2012, yeah. where piracy was rampant. Um, e even the estimates, I think, were low. Uh, around that same time, Steam started getting a lot of popularity. Started yeah. really coming into its own as a game delivery service and, and not just the creator of Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, uh, piracy kind of went away. Now, it still exists, but you're, as a company, as a digital distribution network, yep. aim for 90%. If you get 90% of legitimate purchases, you're getting nine out of every $10 you could possibly make. Oh, yeah. You might get 93, 95. You're never going to get 100. No. You will never, ever, and ever. If you try to push for that, you just poke the bear. Right. You will never, ever, ever, ever get 100. 100% 100 is impossible. It's impossible in business. It's impossible in finance. It's impossible in everything. There's always something that comes up and goes, oh, yeah, here's three bucks. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it always happens. If you settle for 90 or 92%, you're going to do pretty well. Yeah. Okay. The problem is when you implement systems like this and you go for 100%. Well, 100% of our games will be purchased, and but they have to be gone through the Epic Store. And we already got a huge payout because we went exclusively Epic. And da, 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 da. Um, you're going to bring the pirates out who go, well, I'm never buying anything from Epic. So, yeah, I'll, I'll download the game for free. You're going to lose way more than you gain. Yeah. And this happens time and time again. This happens in DRM-centric games. This happens in slow digital delivery content games where you buy a base game and then it's $40 for every, every DLC every. that comes yep. out for it. Sims is a great example. Um, EA in general is a great example. <laughs> all the sports um, crap. Right, all, all, all the sports games, all the, the derivative... Uh, you know, yearly releases of games. Of oh, the exact same game over and over and right. over again. Yeah. We treat the graphic settings and added additional lighting. You get a different... We don't you care. Get, you get this year's uniform. It has a patch on it. Right. Brought to you by BioFreeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, piracy is not a... I don't want to pay for it. Piracy is a content delivery and availability issue. And if it's not available where I want to buy it, I'm not going to buy it. Well, yeah, this is kind of interesting because the, the, this is video games, but I think this is actually, piracy is probably, in my opinion, going to strike back up to that, but in media. Mm -hmm. Because media content right now, all the streaming services and everything... I'm not subscribing to you all. Yes, exactly. We kind of talked Do about. Do you this understand that on Jeff's Discord? If you haven't yeah. joined Jeff's Discord, it's a dollar. I'm here to promote. That's all I'm here for. You do way more promotion than I ever do, but you got me four of them uh, tonight. Exactly. So, um, but yeah. Uh, which one do you want to go with? I we don't, don't. We got twenty minutes left. Let's go with the big boy. Gigantic. So, um, but yeah, there, there's so many CBS access. Apple TV's coming out, Netflix, Hulu, all of these. And then there's exclusive content only on these channels. And well, you know I'm getting CBS All Access so I can watch Picard. Well, yeah. But again, how many people are probably just like, you know, I'm just going to pirate it. And smell good? Now remember, that's that, and that's a that's only it's a... It's a 16 ounce? It's a 16 ounce. Okay. So. Um, have you had this one? I have not. Oh, wow. It's exclusive. I just bought it this week. Um, so I, I think piracy in media is going to be going up a whole lot more um, like it has been with video games in the early 2000s. Now, I know media piracy has been around for a long time, but I think content shows, I think more TV show piracy is going to be coming out because early on it's still always been movies, early access to movies. But yeah. I think TV show content is really where piracy is going to come back up because... Oh, Boy, I do not know these glasses yet. No, you don't. That's just, that's just, wow. Oh, okay. There we go. There you go. Buddy old pal, since I'm here, you drink White Claw? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. That smells good. I, I might need more of that. All right, you can go ahead and try it. Learn to pour it. Yeah. It should go lit. There we go. It's closer. That's close. It's closer. There we go. There we go. Smells good. You smell, you smell some bourbon in that. A lot of bourbon. So Grand Cru is supposed to be multi. Super dark chocolate. Yeah. Super dark chocolate. Yeah. Here, give the uh, super dark chocolate. Yeah. Here, give the uh, people at home. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you can't see more than like a millimeter or two into that glass right now. 
Ah. Let's see. Ah. Ooh. I like that. Oh, yeah. You're almost forgiven for the Zima. <laughs> I mean, this is this is really nice. I, this isn't the greatest, but it's really it's nice. It's really good. It's really good. It's what a, is that taste that hit like three seconds late? There's something oh, yeah. that... Yeah. Toffee. It tastes like toffee. Yeah. I wonder if it's like the, the that charred was oak. super or, late. I wonder if it's like a charred oak in the barrel. Like I was about ready to respond and I went... What is that? Yeah. No. As you were saying, like, oh, I something taste developed. It. Something developed. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sorry, we're having mm -hmm. a little too much fun right now. Oh, that is good. Uh, someone said may or may not have 10, uh, 10 terabytes of media. My Plex server is only two and a half. Jeez. And most of that media I already owned. Yeah. I think I have. Six terabytes of media. Yeah. So, whether I own it or not, I will not say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have a quite extensive DVD and Blu-ray library, and I ripped most of my media myself. Yeah. yeah. Pawn shops. Or no, uh, um, what are those? Red boxes. Actually, actually, a lot of full retail. Really? I own the discs. Oh. Yeah. I have boxes upon boxes of discs. 6.7 terabytes here. Let me know how big your Plex library is. Uh, yeah. I kind of want to look now. No. <laughs> this is nice. I like this. Mm -hmm. This isn't, the body on this isn't very thick. Or actually, it's medium at front, but thin at the back. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. This would be really good at a fireplace, and it's still not, it's not a meal. No. But I could still take my time with this. This isn't a, a thick barrel-aged coffee stout where you're cutting it with a knife and you only want to have four ounces because, oh God, I literally yeah, I cannot mean, drink I mean, anymore. I mean, it's not sticking to the glass. Yeah. But it has that barrel-aged bourbon taste to it. 32 terabytes. What? <laughs> so I got a 6.7, a 400 terabyte, a 400 gig, a 32 terabyte. Good Lord. A 24 terabyte. And did we get a super chat? No. For some no, reason. It was blocked. Oh, no, no. We got an emoji. Oh. Okay. Uh, my X265 encode of the Blu ray release of Avengers Endgame just completed. Uh, we got 24 terabytes. Yeah, wow. Uh, my entire NAS server is 20 terabytes. Is is 24 of actual physical storage, but it's about 20.5 available. Mm. Um, <laughs> 32 terabytes of Dell servers filled with porn. <laughs> Three terabytes of games here. Um, oh, I've got a lot of uh, software disks that are backed up. Um, let me see what my software library is at. Ah. Ah. Just missed it. As it no, no, it's counting. It's counting. John thought he had a large emulation library for a while. I thought I did. <laughs> a shocking we will go. A shocking we will go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these are just discs that I own. This is not, and maybe like some downloaded like Ubuntu yeah. images and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, my my free NAS server is six six terabyte drives in a RAID Z2, which gives me about 24 terabytes of, like I said, physical storage, but actually 20.5 after allocation and swap space and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my software library is only 434 gigs. Uh, that does not include my emulation library, which is quite a bit larger. <laughs> so we'll, we'll count that one up. I uh, actually just checked. It's 36 terabytes. Good lord, Jeez. you guys bit torn a lot. <laughs> 4.7 terabytes of Steam. Yeah, mine's probably close to that if I yeah. downloaded it. Well, one. I wonder what Steve's is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, things like your emulation, though, also includes, like, Dolphin and other... Well, it includes Wii. Yeah. You're see, not wrong about that. Yeah, so mine's all retro. Yeah, well, mine's mostly retro. 
Yes, with, but you have to understand a Wii with some new ads. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, the Wii right there is also one game is the size of like three systems of retro. Yeah. Uh... Oh, hey, super chat. Yep. Uh, have I heard of Adam Carolla's Endless Rent IPA? I have not I heard have of that. Not. No, but that, I'm certainly interested. I am interested. I I think Adam Carolla is hilarious. I think he has that quick humor. Yes. And he's witty, not crude. Yes. I, I appreciate a witty comic. Yes. And it's like, I, I know some people find him offensive, but it's at the same time, it's like, no, it's more truth it's telling. It's really, really a smart joke. Yeah, it's really, right. yeah. If, you, if you're offended by it, then you probably didn't get the joke. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and there is such a thing as gallows humor and dark humor and things yeah. like that. Finding funny in, in serious places. Well, I love that. Well, that's the thing. It's like you talk to any comedian and even like, um, what is it? The Jerry Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars. Yeah. They constantly talk about, oh, in private circles, every tragedy, we're just, we got jokes. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The, the second half, we're laughing They're about it. They are lining up. We can't say it, but it's funny. And yeah, there's humor in dark, you know, yeah. in dark things. Uh, yeah, if you can find. I I have both been really proud and ashamed of jokes I've made during some oh yeah <laughs> some particular news yeah. events. <laughs> like ooh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> a, a, speaking a, of jokes, though, a more lighthearted uh, news event. Yeah. that didn't end in anything of tragedy. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, more weird. of a perplexing story. Yes. Um. So we we were talking about. John, what do you do with all your old TVs? <laughs> you either like, break them, blow them up, or recycle them. Yeah. That's usually what I do with my old TVs. I don't save them and uh, put them on people's porches. Mm-hmm. Which is what one Virginia man decided to do. Well, actually two, because there were two involved. There was two, there was two involved, and this seemed to be almost an anniversary of... Apparently this happened before, a yes. year ago. But an individual or two individuals, and the interesting thing was that they had a old CRT monitor on their head. Because I know right. that's not a TV. Right, that's no, a, it's a that's CRT a C, monitor. That's a CRT monitor. Uh, so go ahead and hit play so we can get rid of the play signal. Because I, watching his his react his look back at the camera, ah! like, you got an ad, you, uh, yeah. Um, Anyway, so what? Who, who's being hailed as the as TV Santa is walking around and dropping old CRT TVs on random porches in Virginia? Yeah. Uh, no idea why. No idea who he is or who his accomplice is, who is apparently wearing a white jumpsuit and also wearing a TV on his yeah. head. <laughs> um, New Hampshire police, uh, or excuse me. Virginia. Uh, Virginia uh, police in the Hampshire neighborhood. Everyone started coming out of their houses, walking around the neighborhood, looking at TVs on the doorsteps, said Janine Brooksbank, one of the recipients who lives in the Hampshire neighborhood. It was very Twilight Zone. Uh, end quote. Each home received exactly one TV, carefully placed so it faced inward toward the door. Uh, and people who had security cameras on their porches had glimpses of the fugitive who also waved at the camera yeah. on his way by. Um, uh, the police were contacted and they said, we determined there is no credible th threat to residences and that this was strictly an inconvenience. It was unique, as they said. And they actually included long pause in that quote. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I kind of wondered then if it was a police it's probably just a repairman or some guy at the dump and... right here's the deal this is brilliant no one got hurt yeah this is a good prank um it is a prank that's the best part it's a prank uh, if i had 50 tvs and i didn't know what to do with them and i went to the dump and they said it's going to be ten dollars per tv because we have to dispose of the vacuum tubes and there's mercury inside of them yeah. and we just don't take them anymore and i tried dumping them off at the goodwill and the goodwill said ah we, we literally can't this. take them we did a, and i went to the recycler and they said yeah we really can't do anything with those anymore i'd say you know what i'm gonna gut one put it on my head and drop it on 50 people's porches over one night and they'll deal with them because one person can drop one off for free but 
one person can't drop 50 of them off without paying something. Brilliant bit of recycling. Oh, yeah. And you know what? If he drops like a Sony 22-inch Trinitron on my porch, I'm keeping that. Apparently, though, there was a couple like classic. Like nice ones. Like nice classic ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and apparently, though, like I said earlier, this happened around the same time last year. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think, I wonder if it's a repairman or if it is a guy at the recycling place. I mean, you can see the jumpsuit <laughs> kind of looks like... Uh, it's in uh, some scrubs. Yeah, it's in some scrubs. Not not that that's not hard to get, but right. you know, it, it, more likely it's just some guy. Hey, what do I have lying around the house? Oh, I got some scrubs. Uh, I'll gut this TV frame. I'm more impressed with the fact of he got that CRT monitor and can see out of it. Yeah, that's what I'm impressed it's with. Balance. It's not. It's not wobbling. You see, it's not like going around. He had to have put a helmet inside of the base of it and then sealed the base back up and then been able to fit it over his head and like strap it on. Yeah. Because that's an impressive costume. As someone who's done some weird things with costumes, that's an impressive costume. I mean, that's called Halloween 2019 costume idea right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to put a transparent LCD on the front of it. And, uh... Do you want to like those? Yeah. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Make some way to play the ring video on them. The ring? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought, like, when he said the ring, I thought he meant, like, uh, the security cameras, because most of these yep. are the from, they're called the ring. Yeah. So I was just like, that, that's just weird, because we are. <laughs> All right. Uh, Q&A? The last... We got some time for Q&A tonight. A couple minutes. We got probably 10-ish yes. minutes. minutes. So the floor is yours. Yes. As I drink this wonderful yes so uh, barrel aged grand cru as questions come in I actually do have a video idea uh, the other one I got from this uh -huh. was a uh, cocktail inspired beer mm. and it is a, a new seasons exclusive but I thought maybe you can come over make the cocktail maybe you can come over here or we can come over here one 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 day or maybe, maybe next time I'm on we just stay a little later <laughs> and we shoot a video here totally so maybe, for that. maybe next time we'll do, we'll just do that because hey I'll, guys welcome to hops and brews yeah all right so then maybe we'll do that uh, I'll I'll shoot you over the cocktail yeah what it's supposed to be inspired to see if you have the uh what is it do you remember I don't okay. it's blue so I'm assuming blue curacao some kind yeah okay so well, yeah let's try the beer it's only a pint so we'll split that and compare the try cocktail. the cocktail to go with it yeah. I like it. So, all right. Jeff, what do I think of the Grand Theft Auto games? I love the Grand Theft Auto games. There's you know, I, I just... I don't know. I like the original, like, Grand Theft Auto 2. Where it was What's still... my favorite GTA? 4 had an amazingly good story. I liked the gameplay of 5 better, but I liked the story in 4 more. See? I, I liked the conflicted Nico um, trying to find his way in the new world, trying to get to get straight while still dealing with demons of his past and getting caught into uh, this this world of the mob and everything else set in New York City I thought the game the, the game itself and the story was magnificently well done in mm -hmm. GTA 4 but I really liked the gameplay in GTA 5 I liked the fluidity of switching between characters I liked the I liked that they took every single cutscene as if it were in a movie yeah. Uh, whereas GTA 4, they had some really clunky cutscenes. Um, so, both of them were great. I think the series have gotten progressively better with every single game. Now, a lot of people say, oh, San Andreas is best, or Vice City is best. I think they were both good. I think GTA 3 was groundbreaking in that it was 3D, and that you could go around yep. the world, and you could traverse it, and it was open world, and da-da-da-da-da. Um, I think that, that San Andreas and later Vice City that followed were fantastic additions to that and expanded on the gameplay. Uh, but I think GTA 4 was even better than those because of what it was working with. And then GTA 5 was probably even better than that on a graphical scale um, and, and a gameplay scale. So each each GTA has yeah. evolved. I was going to say, like each GTA, uh, personally I haven't played it, but I do know or a lot of each one. I played them all, but just not a lot. But each one has its own mark of, look, we're pushing the envelope in X category. may not be the whole entire world, may not be the, you know, best game in the world, 
but they push one part of as- uh, a particular aspect. Yeah. And they've been hitting it and 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 been excellent at yeah doing what they've been trying to do. And not only that, but Red, Red-, Red Dead Redemption out of the Rockstar San Diego studio. Similar. Phenomenal games. Um, and and so I have never had a problem with Rockstar as far as a gameplay or innovation perspective. Definitely had a problem with them from the business perspective of the microtransactions and the multiplayer only. And that's another conversation. Um, but the games themselves have been great and they've been improving with every single release. Yeah. Uh, and have I tried out the Valve Index headset? I have not. I am chomping at the bit to get a chance to work with it. Uh, someone said the 5700 XT is better price performance, but the 2070 Super is more overclockable. Yes and no. Uh, there are some 2070 Super cards that are overclocking very well. That are, there are some others that are peaking out at a certain point. Uh, but the 5700 XT is definitely the better buy, in my opinion, at 399 instead of 499 or 450 or 550 or, or, or 600 for some of the higher end 2070 Super cards. Um, and if you are streaming, the NVIDIA route is definitely the way to go because of the NVENC built into the cards. Uh, they absolutely beat out AMD as far as a media encoding standpoint. It's what I use on my home server here. Uh, this is a GTX 1660, which is the cheapest card that you can get with the new NVENC engine built into it. And it's what's bringing you the content today. Um, so if you're looking for a gaming price to performance, uh, 5700 XT. If you're looking for an all around, I want to get into game streaming and and gaming, and I don't care as much about price performance. 2070 Super. Avoid the 2060 Super. Go with the 5700 or the 5700 XT. Those are really the only two options in those price points. Uh, let's see. All you had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. Yes. Uh, who would win in a fight, Duke or Doom Guy? Duke. Duke. I give it to Duke. Duke. Ooh. Actually. Here's Duke. Why. Here's why, too. He's also evil dead. Yeah. <laughs> way better catchphrases. Yeah, way better catchphrases. That, that that Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yep. Yeah. Duke. 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 Um have you seen the trailer for Ion Maiden? No. Uh, which was originally Iron Maiden, but Iron Maiden, the band, filed a lawsuit and they had to change it to Ion Maiden. Oh. It's a new game made with the Duke 3D engine. Oh, interesting. Made by 3D Realms. Okay. So it's literally Duke, Duke. 3D reimagined for modern gaming. Interesting. Oh, man, right. The sequel we always wanted yeah, from Duke I was Nukem. Gonna say, like, it was it, it, yeah. Please don't let it be Duke Nukem 3D or whatever. Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah. Right. No, no, it's not Horrible. that. It's literally the same engine that Duke 3D was made in. Okay. And it looks amazing. It's It releases tomorrow on Steam. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I, I was watching reviews for it today, and a lot of people were really hyped on it. So it's probably something I will be getting. Red Dead Revolver, screw that game. It sucked. Uh, <laughs> as soon as they got high, high, high budget money yeah. with Red Dead Redemption, it became a good game. But Red Dead Revolver, eh. Same thing with Just Cause. Just Cause, the original game, was terrible. Just Cause 2, freaking brilliant. <laughs> uh, new No Man's Sky, yes, with VR support. Uh, I, I am definitely looking forward to playing that and exploring that in VR. Uh, wow, we're talking new build engine all of a sudden. Not really? Okay. Well, it's a very old engine. Uh, let's see... Index seems like the real spiritual successor to the Rift. No, I'd say it's a spiritual successor to the Vive because S- Valve was involved in the creation of the Vive and then later in the creation of the the Index. So, uh, let's see, what else? 3600 or 3600X, if I don't plan to overclock. 3600 is a freaking impressive processor, but the 3700... Th- th- ah. 3600X comes with the better cooler. So 3600X, I would say. Simply because it comes with better cooler. Well, how much is the cooler versus the buying a separate cooler? Cooler is 40 bucks by itself. And the price point? Uh, it's $30 more. Okay. So, yeah. But you're also getting a better binned 3600 with right. XFR, which jumps you up to 4.3 instead of 3.9. So, so if you want to say that, 40, 50 bucks. 
3600X, I would say. Although the 3600, nothing to scoff at. No. Nope. Uh, that's what's in this right here. And uh, I was super impressed with it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all allowed of bubble gum. I think I was gonna do that for one of my videos. <laughs> kick ass or chew bubble gum? Oh. Chew bubble gum. Just chew bubble Oh, it was that, yeah. Because that, that, you can't kick ass. Yeah, no. no. It was that, yeah, that, that gum <laughs> review one I did. <laughs> All right. All right. What about the rumors from Team Blue? Team Blue doesn't have anything. They don't. We have this 10 nanometer yeah. chip that's totally going to blow the doors off. We can't get 10 nanometer fabs out of our fabs. No. Nothing's happening over there. Um, yeah. Um, we know with the 9900K, Intel is basically maxed out. They might get another 100 megahertz out of something. Who knows? They might better bend their chips. Who knows? What we do know is they suck at 10, 10 nanometer fabs. They can't get their current architecture down to 10 nanometer level. And they can't get their architecture down to 10 nanometer level. And that's the long and the short of it. Yeah. Um, when they do, if they're able to, which so far they've proven they can't, if they're able to, might be a little bit better, but they're going to be chasing the train that is the 7 nanometer AMD on the path to 5 nanometer in two years with what AMD is proving to be better IPC, better performance, better scaling, better integration, better PCI Express, better... The, the, the list goes on. So, uh, my opinion of the i3-9100F, good or bad? Bad, at this point. Um, it's pointless. Uh, 9300F, or 9100F, excuse me, i3, is about $130, if I remember correctly. Uh... The i3-8100, which is what this derivative is, is four cores, four threads. Um, and the i3-8100 also had video on board. <laughs> um, but it actually lost out to the 2200G straight up. It The 2200G was four cores, four threads on AMD's side that beat that straight up. And at $140, you can get a 2400G, which was four core, eight threads, which left it in the dust. Yeah. Um, I tested that about a year, year and a half ago. The 9100 was no improvement on the 8100. Just flat out was not. Um, not only that, but expandability, future-proofing, upgrading. Yep. Uh, you can take a B450 motherboard and take it from your 3200G or 3400G for roughly the same price as an, I, as an i3 80 or 9100. And you can upgrade that to a 3700X. There you go. Yep. Yep. 2600 for 130 bucks. Great buy. Go for it. Uh, Matthew, subscribe to my channel. Woo! You got one. I got one. You got, you got four. <laughs> Yay. I got four patrons. I know. Uh, if I was buying a under $600 GPU right now, what would I get? Under 600 5700 XT is what I would buy. Because then I had $200 to spend on something else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yep. Um, 5700 XT is going to be hard to beat. I want to see where the board partner cards come in, especially like the Sapphire Pulse, maybe at a $420, $440 price point. It's still probably going to be a better price performance than a 2070 Super. 2070 Super does have better NVENC, so if you are looking at game streaming and you are legitimately going to be game streaming, not just going, oh, I have a Twitch and I'm gonna stream twice and then never be done and then be done with it ever again. Um, 5700 XT is probably the best price performance you're going to get. You're not yeah. gonna get RTX, but who cares? It's on four games. Um, Skull's trying to pit my channel out. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we got a bunch of questions piling. Uh, there's something about a 212 Evo. Copper is expensive. 
uh, and doesn't help much, especially if you buy a 212 Vivo. Yeah, but a 212 Vivo is still 30 bucks usually. You can get it for about 20 bucks. Further down. Yeah. Uh, for any build today, would you still buy a 212 Evo? Ooh, that's a great one. Maybe in a push pull. Um, 212 Evo is still solid, and I would say it's still better than the AMD stock coolers. But I'm actually going to be experimenting on should you upgrade an AMD stock cooler. Um, specifically looking at the 3600 because that's the one CPU that I have. But I might expand that to the 3700X and 3900X later. Ooh. Because they are, from what I've been seeing, super efficient at temperatures and not overclocking much beyond what their boost clock is. So do you even need a cooler? I don't know. And yeah, go subscribe to Hops and Brews. I already got two. Sweet. One. Yeah, I know. Someone asked, uh, what was your first PC build? Ooh, first PC build. First new PC build or first PC build? I don't even remember the first PC because all of it was just used parts from... Like, a lot of used parts. <laughs> friends are like, um, oh, this ran, this ran. I was like, I don't even remember. Um, so my first PC build, uh, I've talked about this a couple times. There was I, I used to live in Springfield, Oregon. There was a bike shop called Hutch's Bike Shop off 21st. And right next to them was a guy who rented out one of the retail strip mall spaces who was like this old database decommissioned guy yeah. where he like took apart old computers. And uh, some of his parts in there were only like a year or two old. And this was like 95, 96. Okay. Um, and uh, so he opened the shop and literally just like put everything he had for sale on like some folding Costco tables. Oh yeah. And I would walk in there and I'd pick up something like I'd pick up like a motherboard and I'd go, how much for this? And he'd go, eight bucks? And I'd go, how about seven? He'd go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally how I built my first from scratch PC was I walked into his shop and I gave him like 50 bucks and I walked out of there with a 486 DX2. Jeez. Uh, so 66 megahertz, socket seven, or socket, gosh. Not even that. Not even that. Socket seven was Pentium. Um, Forget what. Yeah. Even that is fleeting me. <laughs> but uh, I built my very first PC, which was a 486DX2, 66 megahertz. I had 12 megabytes of EDO memory. Um, I had a 2.1 terabyte uh, hard drive. Jeez. And a 500, gig or 500 megabyte hard drive. I bought two of them. Um, I had a CD-ROM 8X drive. Oh. Um, I had a sound card. I had a... Gosh, was it an S3? I want to say it was an S3 2 megabyte graphics card, VGA. Okay. VGA or maybe SVGA. I think it was an SVGA S3 800 by 600 graphics card. Two megabytes. I do remember that. It was two megabytes. Um, in an AT chassis, not an ATX, AT, um, and, and put it all together. And so it was a desktop build, and I built that thing from scratch for like 50 or $75. So we're right in between. Right. Nice. Mowing lawns yeah. like in elementary school, <laughs> elementary middle school. Um, my first new build, because I did also a 475 megahertz AMD K6 II with an 8 megabyte GeForce. Okay. Original GeForce. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I did one of those. Um, had an 800 megahertz Duron for a while. Uh, honestly, all from brand new parts where I didn't wasn't like like scrounging like bargain basement deals yeah. kind of thing. Was honestly my i7 920 build. Was the X58. Um, so was out on my own. Had a job. Had disposable income. That kind of thing was an i7-920, 12 gigs of OCZ Platinum memory, 1333. Um, had two 80 gig Seagate drives and a RAID 0 for a boot and three 1 terabyte Western Digital Black drives for a storage disk. So I had two terabytes of storage and 80 gig and 160 gigs for a boot. Um, and dual 9800 GTX Plus cards from Zotac, back when they made NVIDIA cards and SLI. <laughs> Uh, and those were one gig cards. And how much? So, how much would the, did this cost? 20, Roughly twenty eight hundred bucks. Oh, jeez! But those were literally the titans for the yeah. day. Oh yeah. So they were four hundred seventy nine dollars each for those graphics cards. It was three hundred seventy nine dollars for that CPU. It was four hundred dollars for that memory. 
It was, um, I had a Corsair, I want to say, power supply. It was one of their first entries into power supplies, and it was the 80 plus gold. Uh, and it was a 750 watt modular power supply. Um, had a Cooler Master CM690 case. That's what I built it in. EVGA uh, SLI three way motherboard X58. <laughs> I don't think it was the classified board. I think I spent 400 instead of 600 on the motherboard, but it was still up there. So I think that was my first brand new, like I'm ordering everything 100% uh, every yeah. brand new build. I had a lot of brand new parts before that. I bought a lot of brand new graphics cards, bought a lot of brand new motherboards, bought a lot of brand new CPUs. Integrated that with used parts though. Yeah, what about you? I wouldn't even remember. I, I wouldn't even- I remember every spec of every computer. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> I couldn't name off the numbers that Jeff does. All I remember was probably uh, just my family's been into PCs since the late 60s. My mm -hmm. father used to program on punch card machines mm -hmm. and everything like that. So he always came home with spare parts. Yeah. Oh, white claw. <laughs> and uh, um, so we always had an abundance of just parts lying around. And it was around the same time about 97 that uh, he's like yeah whatever you want just take it and i just put together a couple hard drives a motherboard and i he said this hard drive already had a boot system on it so uh i wasn't nearly the tech hardware guy you were at that particular age it was i just need windows and i want it to load i'm good to go uh, it was probably windows 98 thing but probably 32 64 gigs of uh, memory, uh, hard drive space, something like that. So, but I do remember 32x speed. Ooh. Uh, read and write. I remember my second build was an 8x or was a 2x DVD ROM and I think a 24x CD. Oh, no, yeah. Most of mine were all. And then CDs. from then on, it was 52x. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Er, er, mid to late 90s, I remember uh, all was. CDX. I remember I had a bunch of CDXs. Yeah. And then uh, never got a DVDX. Yep. Uh, someone's, yeah, my first build had a DVD ROM drive. Uh, and I also added a, a, an ancillary CD burner to it. Mm. Um, so I was one of the first people on the block with a CD burner. Yeah, I had. I, had I was one of the first people on the block with a DVD ROM drive. And in fact, the NVIDIA 8 megabyte GeForce card that I added to the system was an AGP 2X card. Mm. Uh, so we weren't to 8x yet. We were at AGP 2x, um, and it had an integrated MPEG-2 decoder, so I could play DVDs. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I come from. The good old days, the, before even Core 2 duos. Yep. Someone said those Zalman coolers are classic. I do have one of the Zalman orbs still. Oh, I I think you probably had it on display in your yeah. Old place. Yeah, I did. Uh, someone had a ZX Spectrum clone. That's awesome. Atari ST. Oh, I remember Steve had an Amiga that he built from scratch. Yeah. And uh, I remember playing on that thing. So, yeah, I know Steve would probably sit there and spit out some even older numbers than... I bought a CD burner and a DVD ROM. That was a waste of money. You know, I thought the same thing. But at the same time, I also had a fairly profitable bootleg business oh, going yeah, in yeah, my yeah, middle no, school no. oh yeah so did i no i so i i was selling cd-rom rips of the matrix oh yeah, yeah on avi that you could play on just about any computer i had uh i i had a, a bootleg business even with floppies yes oh i had a bootleg business with floppies too yes so but yeah cd uh i burnt so many uh albums for friends and and people for uh the 9.99 value yep Yep. Piracy, man. It was it was the way to go to the. Uh, ah, yeah. It was a thing. It was <laughs> it was fun. Take him away, boys. <laughs> yeah, I remember ripping terminal velocity off of floppy disks and selling that to classmates yep. because they had the shareware version and I had the full version. Um, and so selling them a set of eight floppies with terminal velocity on it or operating systems, you yep. know, giving them. You know, you buy me the floppies and give me five bucks, and I'll uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll put stuff on here for I'll, it. I'll, yeah. I'll copy off Windows three point one install disks yep. for you, or uh, or Windows ninety five, which was twenty. 
No, there was a couple times uh, stuff like that happened where I was like, oh, I need storage for something. And I went to my dad's filing cabinet and he had like a boot drive of Windows 3.0 and I took one of the discs and like yeah. wiped it. Yeah. And he got... Yes. <laughs> Cause, you know, it's a stack of As eight. he should have. Yeah, it's like a stack of eight or nine. And yeah. I took like the middle one out. I was like, oh, you he'll, son he'll, of he'll a never bitch. know. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> he got so pissed. <laughs> I, just, I just, you know, cleaned it off and deleted everything off it. It's like, all right, I need that 32 kilobytes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a friend growing up uh, who... Uh, their family used to get really pissed off at me because every time I would come over, I would rummage through their floppy disks. Oh, yeah. So so back in that day, you didn't have, like, the kid's computer and your computer. You had your computer. Yeah. That was it. And so we had the family office, and we'd go in there, and we'd play games, Terminal Velocity, Descent, yeah. Doom, Wolf 3D, whatever the flavor of the day yeah. was. Uh, later on, it was... Uh, uh, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Uh, oh, you're getting into CD-ROM right there. Yeah, getting into CD-ROM, you know, late Windows days kind of yeah. thing. Um, but we'd get into, into stuff like that. But while he's playing games, I would be rummaging through their floppy disks looking for interesting software to pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked if... Uh, or talked about Winamp. I, like, I still use Winamp. Still use Winamp. I karaoke use. is... Oh, yeah. Karaoke for... That, that Winamp Win has the best karaoke plugin. Yes, it does. Absolutely does. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Winamp is coming out with another player yeah. sometime soon, too. Kick Salama's ass. Uh, God, that's such a stupid thing. Winamp, Winamp, Winamp. Oh, oh. Kick Salama's ass. Ah. <laughs> anyway i think that's about it for tonight it's 10 21 that's time to call it this yep. has been talking heads episode 93 thank you guys so much for watching go follow john's channel at hops and brews i will have a link down in the video description i forgot to add his link but uh, uh you can hops and brews on youtube yeah. or any other social media channel yeah. or outlet you might uh Remember to always fight blessed Swipe left, click yes, hit the like button, smash that subscribe if that's what you're into. But uh, seriously, go check out John's channel. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, new video coming out likely on Friday as I probably need to shoot and edit it tomorrow. Uh, but uh, that's going to do it for episode 93. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've said that four times now. And as always, we will see you next Wednesday. Later on. See you guys. What do I click?